Welcome to ESPN's coverage of college football presented by Cars.com. We're here in Ann Arbor. A game with Big Ten Championship and even BCS at large implications. Michigan taking on Nebraska, the first trip for the Cornhuskers here since 1962. Just the seventh meeting. These teams will now play every year, though, as members of the Legends Division, where they're currently tied for second, a game behind Michigan State. Nebraska has the head-to-head -head tiebreaker with the Spartans. Michigan needs to win both of its remaining games and get some help. Dave Pash, Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman, it's conceivable, guys, that either of these teams could fail to reach the Big Ten title game and still go to a BCS Bowl. Well, make no mistake about it, Chris. You've been there before as a player. The motivation's there. The difference between a BCS Bowl, non-BCS Bowl, the gifts you get, the prestige, the way people treat you, there's a lot of motivation to win this game today. You know, it's something to remember. And when you get my age, you say, what bowl games did you play in? The first one out of my mouth is the Rose Bowl back in 1984 off the, and the 85 Rose Bowl off the 84 season. It means a lot to the players, not only now, but in the future. And yeah, make no mistake about these coaches are using every ounce of motivation they get. Bowl gifts and everything else. You might say, well, that's silly. That's not silly. These kids want to go play, go play in a BCS bowl game. Nebraska won the toss and deferred. So Michigan will receive. Odoms and Gallon are the deep man. We're underway at the big house. It'll be Odoms from the goal line. Odoms spinning out of a tackle at the 20 and crosses the 30-yard line. Jim Edke on the tackle at the 31. Take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Denard Robinson still with gaudy numbers, but nowhere near what he accomplished last year. Nebraska tailback. One reason why is you have Fitzgerald Tucson, a guy that's kind of taken the lead at the running back position, been very productive, especially after the left past four games. Corner Alfonso Denard, potential high draft choice, will be asked to cover Michigan's top receiver, Junior Hemingway, all day. And here's a run play on first down as Toussaint dragged down by Stein Cooler and Compton for a loss of about four at the 28 yard line. Toussaint had 192 yards last week, 121 in the first quarter. That's one of the reasons why Denard Robinson's numbers are down of late. But also, guys, when you watch film of Denard Robinson, you're not seeing the same guy, right? Well, the thing you're saying as a quarterback, when you see an open rush lane a year ago, he would take off and run, be aggressive running downfield. You're seeing him keep his eyes downfield, trying to be more of a quarterback. I'm not sure Denard just needs to be more aggressive and run the ball when he sees his receivers covered. Play fake on second and 14, a wide receiver screen to Gallon, grabbed to the ankles by Levante David, their leading tackler. It's a gain of five. It'll bring up third down and nine. Let me go with this. I've watched Denard Robinson last year. I voted for Denard Robinson for the Heisman Trophy. This year, I'm not seeing the same guy. I don't think he runs with any anger. I don't think he runs with any passion. If he decides to put scrambling off the pass look into his game, he would rush for 140 yards a game. Doesn't do it. Averaging under 60 yards per game, rushing in Big Ten play. He'll throw here on third down and long, and his pass is incomplete. Intended for Kelvin Brady. It looked like Robinson had a rush lane right down the middle. Exactly, Dave, and here's the point that I'm going to tell you. Look at the rush lane for Denard Robinson right there in the middle of the field. It's wide open. He can run for the first down, yet he chooses to throw the ball. Now, that tells me one of two things. One, he wants to prove to everybody that he can be a pocket passer, which does nobody any good. What it does do, it gives Nebraska a shot, and it puts less of a burden on their defense. That was almost picked off. Siante Evans had a better shot at it. Here's the punt. And it's a short kick. Abdullah says get away from it. And it takes a Nebraska hop to the 41-yard line. Now, with that said about Denard Robinson, Michigan is having a terrific season, 8-2, and 4-2 two, and two in league play. So is that okay? Well, you take a look at Nebraska, the way they built their team. Bo Pelini took over. Nebraska team was awful on defense. They play great defense. They have a much better record. What Greg Madison and Brady Hoke has done on this defense, always remember, defense counts first. Offense is all good. You win championships with defense. More of a weapon. I mean, you're taking a weapon out of the game. If he decides to run the football and scramble, just a perfect, play to run and get the first down. He chooses not to, which hurts their offense, in my opinion. Only a 27-yard punt. 
And here's Martinez keeping on first down. He's been bottled up a lot this year running the ball. Pushed out by Floyd. Our impact players brought to you by Jared, the gallery of jewelry. Martinez improving as a passer. Last four games, only one interception. Nebraska tailback Rex Burkhead. All-purpose player has over a thousand, thousand yards rushing. You all see him line up at quarterback today for the Huskers. Gain of five, and now option with Martinez and Burkhead, and the pitch behind Burkhead. It's a free ball. Burkhead recovers, though, at the 39-yard line. So he lost about six on the play. Option football. The tailback's got to get out in front in a five-by-one relationship. Burkhead was too far in front of the quarterback. That's a trust play, too, isn't oh, it? Urban? You have to run that thousands and thousands. What's they've done? They're an option football team. you got to do it blindfolded in your sleep. Martinez will get the check from the sideline. The play clock is at 10. Lost electricity here, and so the jumbotrons are down. There's only one play clock they're using, and it is on the end of our left as Martinez throws it complete. Floyd stepped in front. The pass intended for Kinney. So Nebraska has to pump the ball. Brett Maher is number seven in the country. Had a 61-yard punt last week in the win at Penn State. Nebraska's never defeated ranked teams on the road in consecutive weeks. Gallon fielding it, trying to tiptoe the sideline, stepped out around the 20-yard line. No score early first quarter at Michigan Stadium. Michigan trying for the first time in school history to win eight home games. Now it's ready to play eight home games in a season. And the Wolverines are 6-0. and oh. They got Nebraska today. And Ohio State next week. Denard Robinson, the quarterback for Michigan, three and out on his first series. From the Michigan 21, Robinson will keep. And he's got a running line. Robinson dragged down by Levante David at the 37. It's a 16-yard run. It's all about reading the defensive end. Denard Robinson remembers how to run the spread offense. Take a look at his eyes. He's going to take a peek out here to the outside. He sees the end, Meredith, number 34, crash inside. He pulls and tucks. And to me, right now, that's the first time that I saw Denard Robinson over the past few weeks or seen him run with a little bit of passion and energy in a little burst. Still one of the nation's leaders in rushing yards by a quarterback along with Taylor Martinez of Nebraska, both in the top five. Play action and a toss to Tucson out of the backfield, gets a block. And Tucson knocked down at the 45-yard line. Let's check in with Quint Kesnick down on the field. Dave, earlier you mentioned the power outage in the stadium. You see it over my shoulder, the scoreboard completely dead. There's only one functioning play clock on the field. Therefore, the play clock when teams drive from left to right will be kept by the back judge, Kevin Schwartzel. At 10 seconds, he'll give the quarterback a visual indicator by putting his arm up. Then at 5, it goes out to his side, and he'll do kind of like a basketball 5 count. So the quarterback, it's up to him to visually see the clock from the back judge all right Quint meanwhile second down for Michigan and Tucson trying to pick a hole Nebraska trying to rip the ball off Martin able to get to him short of the first down marker well let's see now the spot might give them enough for, to move the chains here based on forward progress yeah it is a first down at the 47 yard line we're seeing a little bit of a pattern here of the true spread offense with Denar Robinson earlier in the year and, and even the last few games you haven't seen that you've seen them trying to force QB runs which is direct snap runs as opposed to the read play and he's very good at the replay was last year and obviously there's two plays in a row is that plus yardage on uh, one's a given one was a pull much more effective off the spread option look than the called runs. Robinson missed most of the second half last week with a wrist injury but practiced all week. He'll take off here and doesn't get much. 
Gain of one with Ante David there again for Nebraska. Now, Chris, that's exactly the, that's a direct cue run. There's a big difference. A read plays where he has the option to give a read. It's a double option. That's that's no different than a tailback running an inside zone. That's the difference between a direct zone, a direct QB run, and a replay. And you can see he's much more effective at the spread option where he has the option to give or to pull. Coaches were telling us yesterday they've been wanting to keep Robinson injury free, and that's a reason why he's not running it as much this year. I don't know if you guys buy that, but I'll buy it. They, he ran it 16 times a game last year, and he's run it 15 times a game this year. Robinson pulling it back. He'll throw, and it's broken up and incomplete. Pass intended for Roundtree. Andrew Green is replacing Prince Amukamara, first-round draft pick, at that corner position, made the play. This is what Nebraska does best, their matchup zone. Andrew Green gets a good beat on the ball. And a good break on the football could have arrived a little bit early. But as a quarterback, when you become a true thrower of the ball, you throw your man open. And what I mean by that is that one you have to put low in the way. That way your guy can get it and you can use your body to shield it. And Green would not have had the opportunity to get that left hand in there to knock it away. That's when you become true, though, when you can throw it low and away on purpose. They go empty here on third down and nine. You got a linebacker on Toussaint. And Robinson standing in the pocket, going to go deep for Roundtree, and it is caught inside the 10 at the 5. There was contact with Roundtree and Dennard, and Roundtree caught it while he was on the ground. There is a penalty flag down, though, in the backfield. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 34. Of the defense, that penalty's declined. Is all the play. First down. That's on Cameron Meredith. So tack on some more yardage after the 46-yard pass play. See the strength of Roundtree. Better runs into him, loses his balance, and as a cover corner, the one thing you can't do is slip or get knocked off. And one way to attack this matchup zone defense that Nebraska likes to play is you throw the ball deep, you throw it deep because that's going to force you then to get the safeties to back up a little bit. The matchup zone is based on the safeties playing at nine and eight yards. You go back to that. It looked like Roundtree got away with one there now. He pushed off right at the end. A lot of times you won't get There's that There's a ball. correction on the penalty enforcement. There's a personal foul on Nebraska. We'll administer it from the end of the run, half the distance. First down. So that puts the ball inside the three. Now, a few weeks ago, guys, we were at Iowa. They had four downs from the three-yard line. They were all straight draft, straight back passes by Robinson. Do you think we'll see it, or will they get him on the perimeter? No, they're going to run that quarterback. They're not going to. He's not a drop-back quarterback. To do that in this situation, they're going to run that quarterback or hand the ball off. Toussaint in the backfield on first and goal for Michigan. He's an audible. He might be chucking here. And a flag comes down. Again, the play clock is on, is to Robinson's back. The way. Offense. Five yards. Still. First down. So Robinson has to look at the back judge there because the play clock is out on that side of the field. That's a tough penalty now. You go from uh, first and goal on the two or three to on the seven or eight now. That's a completely different set of players that Michigan is going to run here. Okay. It's the quarterback's job and his responsibility because he knows the rules coming in to identify the back judge where he is on the field and understand the hand signals right there. Denard Robinson couldn't find him. Why? Because he looked around and checked the audible. When he was checking the audible, eyes off the back judge, didn't see the clock winding down. So now from about the seven yard line, it's first and goal. And they'll put Robinson in the gun. Robinson in trouble, gets away from one man and then dumped for no gain. Nice play by Dennard backside. It'll be second and goal. Nebraska's defense, it's real clear their game plan. Nine guys surrounding the off the line of scrimmage. Within five yards of the ball, you have nine defenders. You're going to force their force to Denard Robinson. have to make a play with his arm. They can afford to do that because they have their 12th defender as that back line of the end zone.
Robinson fakes the handoff to Hopkins, now looking to throw, and Gallon is there, touchdown Michigan! Touchdown pass of the season for Denard Robinson. And the third touchdown catch for Gallon. That conversation could be about who he's supposed to look at. It actually looked like on that delay of game that Robinson was looking at the umpire. But it's the back judge who is standing out of bounds on the back line under the goal post who is the one counting it down. Because again, that play clock on that side of the field is out. The point after by Gibbons makes it 7 0 Michigan. When you have your best corner getting beat on two big plays, the second series of ball game, you could be in for a long day. We'll see if they respond. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Jared the Gallery of Jewelry, with five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. Great tradition between these two schools with multiple Heisman winners, including Charles Woodson in 1997. Both of these schools with more than 800 wins. But only the seventh time they've met, they'll now play every year in the Legends Division. Terrific drive engineered by Denard Robinson at 46-yard completion on third down and eight that set up the touchdown pass to Gallon. This just has the feel of becoming a great rivalry, doesn't it? The traditions. And the settings, two great stadiums, two great programs. And a lot at stake today. A game back of Michigan State, which is playing Indiana right now. Short kickoff. Abdullah, who has a return for a touchdown, did well to keep his balance there. And a flag down as Abdullah finally goes down at the 27 yard line. Brandon Lombard in the stop for Michigan. There is a penalty play. Dennis Lipsky, our referee today. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 48 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. Correction, 10-yard penalty, first down. Michigan used a naked pass, which means they're not going to block the defensive end for Nebraska. Denard's going to give a hard run action fake. And Gallon on the backside is going to run a crossing route. Well executed by Michigan. I love the way that Denard sets his feet and delivers a pass. Well, Denner, as a coaching point, when you play man-to-man -man defense, the number one rule, do not look back at the quarterback until the very last second. His eyes were focused on Robinson, lost sight of his man. And when you're looking at the quarterback and not your man, the receiver normally will run away from you. Martinez, and he stays in bounds. Knocked out at the 20-yard line. So it's a first down, gain of 11. Now Martinez comes into this game seventh in school history in total offense. Really seems to be improving as a passer, too, over the last four games. 64% completion percentage. He was around 50 prior to that. And obviously still a very dangerous runner, averaging 77 yards on the ground per game. Rex Burkhead with his first touch, but he ran into Mike Martin for a loss of two or three. Started a little slow, but the last three games, Mike Martin has been a dominant football player. Take a look at him inside. Watch him control his guy one-on-one. -on -one. Low man always wins the battle. Penetration by a nose tackle or defensive tackle forces running backs to run the hop or run with width instead of vertical down the field. And Burkett averaging 26 attempts the last five games. Martinez going to throw it here, and it's caught by Marlowe and undercut by true freshman Blake Countess, making his fourth start at corner. This is the second or third time we've had a chance to watch Taylor Martinez, Nebraska offense. When they start running the belly G option and the quarterback double option off the bash play, off the power play, that's where they're most effective. Drop back passing and just turn around, hand it off to Burkhead, that's not when they're the best. So when you get him in third down and long as a defense, you're in good shape, right? Yeah, that's what you play for. If you're, if you're in Michigan, you want to get him off schedule. That's where they are. They're off schedule right now. 
And again, hard to hear those checks in front of 110,000 people. One of the largest crowds Nebraska's ever played in front of. And Martinez has it pulled in. And then the ball comes out. It's rolled incomplete. Marlowe, the intended receiver, could not hang on. Kenny Demons, the middle linebacker, running with a wide out. Well, here's a, it's a well-thrown ball. Deliberately thrown to the back shoulder behind because Demons is up on top. And a good job by Demons of getting the arms in between the arms of the receiver, not allowing him to secure the catch. Technique. See, he didn't look back at the quarterback, did he, Dave? Nope. Maher's second punt. And it's off the side of his foot and way out of bounds. Well, Michigan will start this drive at the 45-yard line. Leading 7-0 midway through the first quarter in Ann Arbor. A 32-yard punt. See, it's nice. All right, back here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, on top of Nebraska. Denard Robinson, terrific on that opening drive with 19 yards rushing and 64 yards passing, including a touchdown to Jeremy Gallon. And now Michigan, after a bad punt, takes over on its 45-yard line. Not a bad time to take a shot deep. Safeties are up, corners are pressed. Good field position. Play action. And Robinson looking downfield. Everybody covered, so Robinson takes off. Robinson tripped up by Levante David at the 39-yard line. A big play on first down. It's almost like he said in our booth and heard us talking about start to scramble, Denard. Nothing deep. They're trying to get Koger right here, the tight end, on a delayed wheel route. He holds the ball. Now, what's he do? He sees his throwing lane. No, no. I'm turning that into a running lane. And when he's done, he's as dangerous quarterback as there is in the country because he now becomes the true dual threat. Levante David has stopped him twice. Otherwise, it might be two touchdowns. Here's Toussaint trying to get outside and able to find a cutback lane. A gain of nine to the 30-yard line. Toussaint has uh, added a dimension to Michigan's offense it did not have earlier in the year. And talking with Al Borges, their offensive coordinator, Borges wants to be a one running back guy. And they were rotating Toussaint, Vincent Smith, Michael Shaw. But lately, Toussaint has been outstanding, and he's the guy now. The play calling we're seeing so far by offense, so far by Al Borges, the offense coordinator of Michigan, is the spread offense. The last one was another zone replay. They're playing to his strengths right now, Denard Robinson. On second and short, Tucson has the first down. Tackled again by David. It's a gain of five, and that's the fifth stop by Levante David. You know, Chris, you talked about Denard. Maybe that's why we're seeing that energy. He's doing what he likes to do. He's, he's feeling comfortable in the Reed style shotgun offense, and he's playing with a lot of passion, a lot of juice right now. And he's got to stop viewing himself as a passer. View yourself as a runner first and a passer second, and you can be more effective and if you look at yourself in that manner, and David's making a lot of tackles, Dave, but he's making them 20 yards downfield. But he saved a couple touchdowns by making those plays. Robinson on a design quarterback run, trying to score through a hole inside the 20. Got about seven yards before he's brought down. Look at that offensive line getting the push. And you know the man with no sleeves on, Brady Hoke. It's cold out here. Got to be proud of that. Anytime you can control that line of scrimmage, I mean, Nebraska has no answer for anything. Other. Nebraska's got 14 yards total offense compared to 100, 120 to Michigan. Michigan's dominating this game so far. Second and three for Michigan. Here's Toussaint, and he has the first down before he's tackled. Tarek Martin on the stop. Fresh set of downs inside the 15 for the Wolverines. Even there, the pure running formation. Nebraska knows they're going to run. The problem Nebraska's having, when you know you're in a second and three, they line up in that formation, they're still getting four yards of pop. That means that the Michigan front is sustaining their blocks, holding on to their blocks. Nebraska's not getting off. 
Six play the drive coming up. The previous five plays were run plays. This will be as well. Robinson and wrapped up by Martin and then gang tackled after a gain of about two. Cameron Meredith, number 34, outstanding. Staying disciplined, not going for the handoff. Denard was fooled by Cameron. Good position. He didn't make the tackle, but he forced the cutback. Watch Cameron Meredith. See that? See that discipline right there? Staying on Denard. Beautiful job of Meredith of being disciplined and playing team defense. Well, he didn't give Denard a clean look. He didn't tackle the back or he didn't take the quarterback. Kind of shook him a little bit. He played that uh, perfectly for that defensive end play. Robinson to throw on second down. Incomplete in between two Nebraska defenders. It was intended for Kelvin Grady. Now Damian Stafford and Siante Evans were there defensively, and Evans a little shaken up. 13 interceptions on the year. The reason why, he's not afraid to make a tough throw or throw the coverage. Now, some of those are real advised, but don't you want a quarterback coach that doesn't, is not afraid to make the tough throw? No, I'd rather have the guy right. take care of the football, <laughs> especially down there in the 50 yard line going checking. in. Just checking. Third down and eight. Boy, that just, here's the, the route they like to run right here. Robinson in trouble. And he's going to get sacked back at the 27-yard line, and that might push him out of field goal range, considering their kicker as long as 38. Levante David makes another play. Damian Stafford there also for the Cornhuskers. That was a coverage sack. Everybody's well covered down the field. Nebraska's bringing six defenders. Denard panics. Yeah, that was a covered sack. Every receiver was covered. No separation down the field. Great pressure by Nebraska. Quick, quick note, the crowd is helping Denard Robinson with the play clock by counting it down for him. Brendan Gibbons long is 38 on the year. This would be a 42-yarder. And it's good. Michigan kickers were 4 of 14 a year ago. Gibbons is 9 of 12 this year. And he gives the Wolverines a 10-0 lead. Two terrific drives, save that final play by Denard Robinson. And Michigan looks outstanding on offense here in the opening quarter. Michigan with a 10-0 lead at the two-minute mark of the opening quarter here in Ann Arbor. Nebraska coming off an emotional win at Penn State last weekend. And that was following a loss at home to Northwestern. That was a big loss because now they need help to win the division. They need to win out and have Michigan State lose a game. They're on the tiebreaker having defeated the Spartans earlier this year. Here's Marlowe for Nebraska on the kick return. And Marlowe's got a seed. Out to the 35-yard line. Brought down by Josh Furman. Three of the top five teams in action tonight on the ESPN Networks at 8 Eastern on ABC. Most of you will see LaMichael James and Oregon taking on USC. The Ducks still have BCS title hopes alive, especially after Oklahoma State lost last night to Iowa State, guys. That was unbelievable. And uh, Paul Rhodes done a great job at Iowa State. Just uh, They're competitive every week. What a win for that program. And Burkhead. Out across the 40 to the 43 for eight yards. Burkhead averages 107 yards per game on the ground. That's 17th best in the country. Urban talks about the belly G series. That's when the guard pulls. That's the toss G. That's where the guard to the side of the pitch will pull around. Well executed. Burkhead again. Up over the top, has the first down of the 46. Van Bergen in there for Michigan. Nebraska going with a little up-tempo direct handoffs right now to Burkhead. The last two were just real quick snaps as fast as they get lined up. They're going again here, trying to change the tempo on Michigan. Martinez going to throw deep, got him in.
first touchdown catch for Kenny, a guy that's been plagued by drops, including one last week against Penn State. He hung out of that one and took it in 54 yards for the score. Love the play call, an excellent job by Tim Beck, offense corner to Brass. It came out up-tempo, two great shots, two handoffs to Burkhead, and then a hard play action for a touchdown. That's a momentum changer. Excellent job by the coaching staff of Nebraska. Extra point makes it 10-7. Martinez with his 11th touchdown pass of the year. Now, Chris, what makes this play so successful, this is just after two direct snap handoffs to Burkhead. Up tempo, you're going to see a speed post on the outside. Hard run action fake by Nebraska. And Martinez lays it out there nice, nicely for a touchdown. Well executed play, but once again, that's set up for the previous two play calls right before it. Up tempo handoffs to Burkhead. And I guarantee you they saw number 30, Thomas Gordon, getting nosy, sitting inside. Anytime you see that as a quarterback, you know from your pre snap read that you have a shot at the post. And Kenny needed that. 17 catches on a year, 10 drops. 18th catch goes for six. Number 30, Thomas Gordon was getting nosy. Good ball handling, Urban. I know that you emphasize that when you coach the position, that you emphasize sticking that ball in that guy's chest and trust it and be patient. Especially when the defense is committing nine defenders to the run. that out it'll come out to the 20 all right for Michigan Dave Pash Chris Spielman Urban Meyer as I'm sure many of you know there have been reports uh, several reports and rumors so Urban just want to ask you uh, reports indicating that you've accepted the Ohio State head coaching position well there's no truth to that and I know it's that time of year I've not been offered any job and I've certainly not accepted any job all right. well here Michigan and Nebraska so far, offensively looking good. We thought this might be a score similar to what we had last week at Penn State when it was 17-14. In favor of the Cornhuskers. Bernard Robinson. And another design quarterback run. He doesn't get much here. Brought down by Meredith. Guys, why do you think we're seeing more of Robinson running? I know you guys were talking about it and asking for it. Because he ran for 1,700 yards last year. He had one Heisman Trophy voter, at least myself, because there was no more of a dangerous football player in the whole country than Denard Robinson. What he's doing now is what he's putting in his game is the ability to scramble. When he has that in his game, it puts so much pressure on the defensive side of the ball. There's a handoff, and Toussaint stood up after a gain of three by Levante David. My question is, why not the first ten games of the year have him be more featured as you see how his attempts are down some, and obviously the rushing yards per game are been down some. I don't think it's just attempts. Anytime you have double option, everybody think about double means you can hand it off or you can keep it. When you do that, you eliminate a defender. And that's a key thing. When I see Denard Robinson operate out of the spread offense and run a read play, that's when I see him being most successful. And then you're setting up the play action pass offense. So I think when, when you let him do what he does well, uh, he's, he's like Chris said, I think he's one of the most dangerous players in America like he was last year, certainly is this year as well. And he accounted for almost 100 yards of total offense in that opening quarter. His team on top by three. Back in Ann Arbor for the second quarter of Michigan and Nebraska. The Wolverines on top, 10-7. As we look at our conference update, brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. Michigan and Nebraska, a game back of Michigan State in the Legends Division. Nebraska needs the Spartans to lose. They have the tiebreaker. Michigan has to win twice, and Michigan State would have to lose twice. Meanwhile, in the leaders' division, Penn State on top for now, but a tough game later today on ABC at Ohio State. Then next week at Wisconsin, so many think the Badgers right now are in command of that division. Let's see if Nebraska on this third and seven, dangerous Denard time as far as scrambling, if they put a spy to watch him. Could be number four, Levante David. Robinson with a half roll, and he's got a wide open Hemingway. First down, Michigan. Hemingway to midfield. 
Hemingway leads the Big Ten and is eighth in the country in yards per reception, and he got 26 there. You defeat the matchup zone of Nebraska with matchups. Right here is a matchup they'll take all day. Hemingway on the dime backer Thorell, no contest. I'm telling you, as far as rack yards, Hemingway knows what to do once he gets the ball in his hands. Senior from Conway, South Carolina, puts Michigan at midfield, and now here's an end around to Odoms. And boy, look at the speed there of Stafford able to track down Odoms. Minimal gain on first down. Talk about form tackling. Right there, he's all, he didn't get him to the ground. There's three things that he did. He kept his head up. He closed the gate in front of the ball, and he brought his feet. This is beautiful. He didn't get him to the ground. Watch him. Close the gate in front of the ball. Head across the bow. Bring your feet and head up. And guess another thing that's unusual in today's day and age of football. He wrapped his arms. Love it. Now, next time, get him on the ground, and you'll, you'll hit the lottery. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's it. <laughs> Robinson pumps and now trying to set up the screen. Terrence Moore tips it and picks it off. Moore takes it back and laterals it. And Denard Robinson has to make a tackle on Dennard. But it's Nebraska ball at the Michigan 30-yard line. How about Terrence Moore? His father passed away a week ago Thursday, comes out against Penn State, plays the best game of his life, and then comes back today with a huge interception. Michigan set up the screen pass. They react to the screen, tip the ball. Denard's got to learn if it's not there, you got to burn it, Chris. If you don't feel good about a screen pass, nothing good can happen when it's not timed up right. Burn it, throw it to the ground, live to see the next play. That didn't look good from the beginning. They are reviewing whether Moore was down before the lateral. So really what they're looking at is a five-yard difference here. That looked like a... Uh... Watch this. That looked like a, a Nikki and Gigi Meyer volleyball set. He looked yeah. down there, didn't he? He looked down before. Yeah, and it's only about a five-yard difference. The point is Nebraska's got the ball. I don't know if you want more running the option <laughs> with the late pitch, Urban. <laughs> hey, Chris, let's talk about what a defense alignment's taught on a screen. Tell you what, that almost looked like a forward lateral, too. That's why you don't run him. Running the option. A D lineman, when he feels the guard, let you go. He knows something up, and you're going to retrace and try to get your hands up and just deflect the screen. Same way with screen and draw. Let's see if he's down. He is down right down. there. Boy, that's one thing you don't want to do. Just secure the ball. Be happy with what you have. What'd you do? Just make a volleyball reference a second ago? Yeah, Barello. Libero. 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 I'm trying to teach you a new sport, man. There's Indama Kinsu. Uh, he's a guy that can do whatever he wants when he gets the ball yeah. in his hands. A guy kick extra points. Detroit Lion, former Nebraska standout. The Lions at home tomorrow against Carolina. Of course, Chris Spielman here in the booth, former Lion. Pro bowler with Detroit at linebacker. That's the one thing, and Urban made a, a great point about being well coached on the defensive side as a defensive ball. Defensive lineman, anytime you feel somebody lets you go, you're not that good. You gotta tell yourself, I'm not this good that I just beat this guy and he's gonna let me go. Retrace. And that was a nice job of recognition by more than a little bit of athleticism, getting up there and self-tipping the ball. Here's the other thing, too. Denard Robinson has 14 interceptions, 11 last year, but 14 picks, 14 touchdown passes. That's a reason why we've seen Devin Gardner in games played this year that we've done. Now, Gardner has not been in yet. I wonder if that might make the coach's decision a little bit easier to play Gardner. Every not put him in yet. Dave, every, in Urban, every coach that we've talked to, is there... They're happy to see Devin Gardner yeah. coming to game. After further review, number 90, who intercepted the pass, was down prior to the lateral. So we'll put the ball at the 34 and a half yard line. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 13:41. 13:41, first down. Nebraska. But to Chris's point, it's not just us up here that are talking about and questioning 
Michigan for playing Devin Gardner. It's opposing coaches that are wondering the same thing. You threw out a stat though, 14 interceptions. That's not acceptable in a quarterback position. So if you're thinking you're a Michigan coach right now, you have to either fix that or you have to make a change. I mean, as well as he runs and everything else, you can't, you've seen a complete game get turned around here a second ago because of the turnover. You can't do that. If it's not right, burn the ball. You don't live to see the next play. Do you take him off the field? Answer you after this play. <laughs> Here's Taylor Martinez now. Fresh off a touchdown pass to Brandon Kinney. Get the ball at the Michigan 34-yard line. Martinez with the pitch to Burkhead. Hit in the backfield and down it goes. It's Jordan Kovacs. Really the heart and soul of that secondary for Michigan. Making the play for a loss of about four. Just a determination to defeat your blocker one-on-one -on -one and handle your responsibility on the pitch and for the safety Kovacs executed, taking the pitch away. Sixth tackle for a loss for Kovacs. Second down and 15. And a timeout called by Nebraska. Play clock was at nine. Time now for today's athletic trivia question. Michigan has the most all-time wins by a BCS school with 892. Nebraska's fourth with 845. Which schools are second and third? It's just the seventh meeting between these two. The last was in the Alamo Bowl in 2005. They met in the Fiesta Bowl when Jim Harbaugh was the quarterback. That was Michigan's victory as that pass is tipped by Martinez. Van Bergen got a piece of it. Incomplete, so it's third and 15 for Nebraska. That was a critical down for Nebraska. They're going to try to get half that yardage back. It was second down and 14. Third and 14 is not manageable. You want to get that down to third down and five, third down and six. With an option quarterback, option offense, third down and 14. Well, Chris, you got that call. That, that's a tough situation. Yeah, I I play this third and nine, get to the 30, and give my guy a 47-yard field goal. Remember, Maher has got a huge leg. One of the best field goal kickers in the country. You have straight man coverage here. Martinez probably going to check off to a quick pass. No safety back there. Nobody. And it's a wide receiver screen. And down to the 34-yard line is Quincy Anunwa. So he's well short of the first down. It would be about a 52 or 53-yard attempt here for Maher. Michigan is the most approved defense in America. Why? You saw it right there. You were bringing six defenders on the pressure. They turned, retraced, and ran and reacted to the screen. That was great defense, but well-coached defense and great effort by Michigan. That's where you have to have the audible, Dave, when you see no free safety or even deep. Audible, take your shot down the field. Maher is perfect 14 of 14 inside 50 yards this year. He's 2 of 5 from 50 yards or longer. This is a little bit into the wind during pregame warm-up. From 51 yards. Oh, it has the leg. And it's good. Maher with a season-long 51-yard field goal ties the game at 10. That would have been good from at least 60. That was a line drive booming attempt. So Nebraska gets three points off the Denard Robinson turnover as we go back to the studio in Reese Davis. All right, Dave, time for a Taco Bell studio update. It involves the Legends division of the Big Ten. Michigan State's the leaders of the legend, if you follow that. Taking on Indiana, Kirk Cousins to Keyshawn Martin earlier. Cousins that hit B.J. Cunningham. It's 17-3, Michigan State. This needs to win out. They could make it to the Big Ten championship game. Iowa leading Purdue. Boiler up, trying to become bowl eligible. Northwestern up by two touchdowns on the Gophers. Wildcats also trying to become bowl eligible. And by the way, Illinois is up by two touchdowns on Wisconsin late in the first half. Wow. Illinois struggling of late. And just to finish up your point there, Reese, if Michigan State wins and Nebraska loses, the Spartans then clinch a spot in the Big Ten championship game. But what we've been hearing all week and the people we talk to around college football as Nebraska just runs up to the ball and kicks it deep, Michigan not set, Odoms 
at the 20 yard line it's out to the 25 we're hearing that if either of these two teams wins its remaining games even if it does not play for the Big Ten championship that it could still go to a BCS game as an at-large and Michigan will start around the 26 yard line and see how Denard Robinson responds after throwing a pick last week he had a couple of fumbles in the first half before leaving the game with a wrist injury did not return the coaches said he could have he was healthy enough but they just continued to go with Gardner at quarterback we haven't seen Gardner yet Tucson in the backfield oh he did a great job to keep his balance and then Levante David finally gets him after a gain of nine yards Chase or Terrence Moore rather missed a tackle at the point of attack you know Chris let's talk the one time tested fact how to win a football game is take care of the ball. That's Denard Robinson's issue. It's nothing else. To turn the ball over like that, now we know exactly why they're making a quarterback change. It's time tested. Ever since football began, you take care of the football, you got a chance to win. He's just being careless with the ball. Just a little difference of opinion. He does not come off the field for me because of the game breaking ability he has. Here's Tucson and trying to get the first down. He does. It's about two yards. Enough to move the chains for Michigan. And I, I just look at it, Urban, I understand your point of view, and it's the right point of view, but for me as a defensive coordinator, and I see number seven come on the field, and I see 16 off the field, I, I send a thank you card because of his ability, and it seems to me, Dave and Urban, that he's starting to run like Denard Robinson ran last year, not the way Denard Robinson has run the last five ball games. Tucson grabbed at the line of scrimmage and thrown back Meredith there for Nebraska along with Will Compton. To continue our discussion on Denard, the one thing, Chris, a coach has over a player when you're trying to teach a guy you want to have him uh, react a certain way to situations, you're going to take their playing time away. Yeah. And once again, I'm not sitting in those quarter in those staff meetings and the quarterback meetings. At some point, when you ask your player to do something with the ball or do this, and he doesn't do that, I'm just trying to put myself in their mindset. That's the only reason possible I can see Garner coming in for Denard because I agree with his game ba game breaking ability. Hopkins and he gets to the 41 for about three or four by the way Wisconsin in the red zone at Illinois down 14 nothing in that game and we're told they just scored a touchdown for the Badgers on the road they're a game back of Penn State for the top spot of the leaders division a question coaching the spread if you don't rep it rep it rep it or you don't run it at game speed can your reads as a quarterback be a little bit off because right now I think he's he's he could tuck it and keep it and go and he's handing the ball off. Robinson here on third down and six and his pass is caught by Hemingway and it's a first down of the 49 yard line. Lance Thorell on the tackle. That's the matchups that Al Borges is looking for. He knows what, exactly where he wants to go with the ball, and he's telling Denard throughout game plan preparation, you're going to get Thorell and Hemingway working one-on-one. -on -one. We trust our guy on the option route to beat Thorell. Now, they have a safety there trying to help him, but what that safety has to do is cheat up a little bit outside because Hemingway's reading his depth. From the Michigan 49-yard line, Robinson will play action. On the rollout, he'll throw on the run, and it's low and away. Incomplete at the 35-yard line. Intended for Hemingway, that pass off target. Robinson, 6 of 11, passing 98 yards and a touchdown. Eight rushes for 31 yards for Denard. Boy, it seems that way. We've seen this guy play now for two years. I've seen him play a bunch in high school. When he sets his feet, I'm not sure he's best when he's on the run. When he's scrambling around and trying to make things happen, you saw him early when he set his feet through the touchdown pass. On the third down, he completed the pass. When he sets his feet, yeah, I'm sure he's not his best. He's terrible at trying to throw on the run. He'll throw again on the run. Now stops. 
And able to take off and get outside and get positive yardage. He got about four. Will Compton chased him out at the 47 of Nebraska. And most guys are terrible when their feet aren't right. I'm not just picking on Denard Robinson, but he doesn't have enough arm strength to overcome bad footwork. You got the 47 yard line going in, third down and six, third and seven yards. You might, the coordinator might be asking the head coach to have two downs to get this first down because that will dictate this play call. You have two downs, you run that quarterback, you get close on fourth down. What would you do? You go for two downs here. Especially with a player like Denard Robinson. I'd run Denard Robinson. And they're going to run him here. And Robinson gets the first down across the 40 to the 39. They won't need two downs because of number 16. Just run a little speed option, trying to pitch off the defensive end. He slants inside. Denard does a great job, reads him. He's blocked. Keep the ball, get the first down, get north and south. Hughie does a good job of swinging those big old hips, pinning the defensive inside to give Denard the short corner. Boy, he's fun to watch, Chris. Man, is he an athlete. You want to take him off the field. Here's <laughs> Tucson between the tackles and Tucson into the secondary. All the way to the 23-yard line. A 16-yard run by Fitz Tucson. Having a guy step up is certainly a luxury that Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, likes, and you have Stephen Hopkins sealing. Tucson running with patience, vision, and the thing he can do is make that lateral cut. Here it comes, right in your face. There's that lateral cut. Mm, it's nice. 34th play for Michigan coming up. They've had the ball for 17 minutes to five for Nebraska. 10th play of this drive forthcoming from the 23 of Nebraska. Tucson grabbed by David and dumped in the backfield for a loss. Here's Reese. They have time for a Sports Center right now, presented by Discover Card. Former Boston College star Mark Herslick likely to make his first NFL start Sunday for the Giants. Herslick, who beat cancer while playing at Boston College, has been a special team standout this year for New York. All right, Reese. Meanwhile, second and 10 for Michigan inside the 25 yard line of Nebraska. Robinson rolling out and looking to throw it back. And he'll run. Robinson inside the 20-yard line, dives across the 15. Somebody tried to arm tackle him. Robinson wasn't going down. He got about nine on the play. What we talk about in the beginning, there's not the burst that we saw. Well, today we're seeing burst, and why? You're going to see it. Right here is patience. They try to come back to the same play where they threw the interception. Now watch the burst. Right there, you see how he splits three guys? When you have that kind of burst, I'm telling you, he is a different football player running the football than we've witnessed the past two games. What was Cameron Meredith doing there, just sticking his arm out? Well, maybe he got confused and thought it was flag football. <laughs> Fourth play, Cameron's a good player. Third down and one. Here's Robinson, first down, touchdown! Rushing touchdown for Denard Robinson this year. That was a 12-play drive. Nebraska has 13 plays for the entire first half. So a good response by Robinson and Michigan after Nebraska tied the game. A designed inside zone rate run play by Denard Robinson. Great play call, great acceleration using one of the best players in America, Denard Robinson. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Now back in 1997, the year before the BCS, Nebraska and Michigan split the national championship. Nebraska, first place in the coaches' poll. Michigan, first in the AP poll. Meanwhile here, Denard Robinson passing Vince Young in a 13th place for most rushing yards by a quarterback. 
Robinson over 3,000 for his career. He's got 66 today and a touchdown. Time of possession, almost 19 minutes for the Wolverines to five for the Cornhuskers. Here's Marlowe for Nebraska. And spun down short of the 20-yard line. Michigan on top at the six-minute mark of the second quarter, 17-10. Our Affleck trivia question, Michigan with the most all-time wins, Nebraska fourth. What schools are second and third? All with more than 845, Texas and Notre Dame. Two of the traditionally most successful programs in college football history. Michigan, the last three years, only 15 and 22, but an eight-win season and perhaps counting for the Wolverines as Martinez takes off down the sideline. First down and more. And pushed out at the 34-yard line by J.T. Floyd. You, know, you talk about this rivalry, potential rivalry, Michigan-Nebraska. Of all the conference realignment decisions made, this seems to make sense. These two teams should play each other. Great programs, great traditions, a lot of respected players and former players. I look forward to watching these two play throughout the years. Here's Marlowe, and he's able to get outside and stay in bounds. Marlowe into Michigan territory. Knocked out by Kovacs at the 43-yard line. Erdman talked about Rex Burkhead as an impact player. Watch 22 cut off the pursuit of number 44, Desmond Morgan. This is why this play goes. You see right here, Marlowe has to run the hump. Four angles, and you see Burkhead cut off the pursuit, and Marlowe does it with speed. But just to illustrate what a complete player Burkhead is. Timeout, Michigan, first charge, timeout. 23-yard run by Marlowe, Nebraska, inside the Michigan 45. Make it a 10-point lead. Two seconds left to go in the first half, guys. You know, Reese, a lot of people still think Wisconsin is the best team in the Big Ten. How do you guys see it? Well, I see it that way. Unless they get beat today, then I see it another way. Here's a pitch to Burkhead. And a flag comes down as Burkhead is knocked out of play by Demons for a loss of one. Looks like there's going to be a hold. They had Jake Long, a tight end, had a hold of a Michigan player. And it is on Nebraska. And a hold of... Brennan Byer, one of the true freshmen, along with Desmond Morgan, Blake Countess, they get extensive playing time for the Wolverine defense. Now, one thing that happens, Chris, on an inside design play like that, Wes, and it bounces outside, the linemen aren't in position, and then they'll reach out and grab the guy. So that was an inside design play that bounced outside. There's that the toss offense. G we talked about. Holding number 41, offense. 10-year penalty, repeat, first down. This is also a guy who doesn't get a lot of reps on offense, Jake Long. Ben Cotton, the normal starting tight end, is out with a shoulder injury. Kyla Reed is now the starter, and Jake Long, the backup, is Nebraska on first and 20. Well, Martinez able to get away from Jake Ryan, still running around. Martin chasing, and Martinez goes down at the 39-yard line. Another loss. Courtney Avery over there for Michigan on the far sideline. Designed triple option play that Michigan defended very well. They're out of sync. You see the space between Martinez and the pitchback is way too far. Third. Anytime you get a defense that's swarming like locusts, you got a chance to make plays. Second down and 27. Michigan held Illinois to 37 rushing yards last week. So far, Nebraska with 47 yards on the ground. Martinez with time, steps up and runs, and gets tripped up by Ryan at the 42-yard line. So it'll bring up third down and long. They have to get to the 33 of Michigan for a first down. Second time's a charm. Jake Ryan missed the tackle on a previous play right there, saved a big gainer by Taylor Martinez. 
as different as Michigan and Nebraska offenses are, they're also very similar. You get in a bad situation, they go backwards. Anytime you have an option style offense that you're struggling throwing the ball, you can't get yourself out of these bad situations. It's third and forever now. They haven't converted a third down yet. Martinez, he'll run. And down at midfield. Got about seven of it back. Ball came out, but they're going to rule Martinez down. And Nebraska will have to punt the ball, and Maher will look to pin Michigan deep. Maher, one of the best punters in college football in terms of distance, although he hit one off the side of his foot earlier. They'll look for accuracy and hang time here to try to put the Wolverines deep in their own end. Again, off the side of his foot. It does stay in bounds, and then it's muffed by Gallon. He covers it up, though, at the 11-yard line. And now a flag comes down. Jeremy Gallon field at the top of the 11. There is a penalty. Flag. It'll be interesting to see what this flag is. JT Floyd landed on top of Gallon. Well, that didn't look like a personal foul. Hit him it? in the head, maybe, and that could well, be the reason for the flag. Well, the point is that that was his own teammate. Let's. Well, when Gallon went to cover up, it looked like somebody ran by him and he may have gotten hit in the helmet. There is no foul for a late hit. It'll be first down and 10, Michigan. That'd be the first time ever in the history that you got a personal foul for hitting your own guy. One of the oldest and most bitter rivalries, guys, featured tonight on the ESPN Networks. you got Andrew Luck and Stanford looking to bounce back from that loss to Oregon. They take on Cal. It's the 114th meeting of the big game. Urban, we got to give our boy Spiels props. Last week, he predicted Oregon would beat Stanford on the road. Chris is on his game, man. He knows. Robinson waiting. Look at him with his left hand on the center, David Mulk. And he pushes forward for about seven yards. How do you do you teach it that way, Urban? Well, it's good patience by Denar. It's an outside stretch play. But is that what you That's wanted a, to do? Uh, you want to you want to you want to get in good position behind your blockers. I don't know if I've ever seen a guy just grab him and hang on to him. But Denar had great patience. He, what you really want is your lineman to get out there a little quicker. 73 rushing yards for Denar Robinson today. They'll hand it off here. Nowhere to go for Tucson. Drilled by Compton for a loss at the 16-yard line. It'll bring up third and five. A solid player. And again, it's all about discipline. Compton into your screen sees the opening. They do not come off the double team. In order to block a penetrating linebacker that's not a blitz, you have to be able to come off the double team between the center and the guard. The guard, Omame, Omame should have came off, off his block chipped up to Compton, they might have had a play. Michigan has been terrific on third down so far in this game, five of seven. Robinson looking for a running lane, and he's ankle tackled by Compton. Nice play by the junior linebacker, forcing Michigan to punt the ball. The open field tackle. About Denard Robinson, you got to try to get him on the ground, and a good call by Nebraska to stop the clock and get some field position. One timeout remaining for the Cornhuskers. Enduring tradition. Academic inspiration. Global engagement. That's the Michigan difference. Timeout by Nebraska. They just told the clock operator to add 17 seconds. Just to reiterate, uh, both jumbotrons were out. We had no electricity here earlier. Now, the one to our right is back on. But for a while there, they were keeping time down on the field, so it's off a little bit with uh, what we have. But now you got both play clocks working and both game clocks working on the Jumbotrons in the end zone. 
So let me make a, an observation of this time last year. You and I did the Wisconsin game. There was no energy, no life in this building. There's new life, new optimism that Brady Hoke has brought, and frankly, it's because of the way his team has been playing this year. Well, his defense has improved by about 20 points per game. They're fifth in the nation in scoring defense last year. They were near the bottom of the country in that category. A great kick here, and it's going to be fair caught at the 33-yard line by Amir Abdullah. Here's Reese in the studio. All right, Dave, coming up in just a few minutes on the Bud Light Halftime Report, we've got Big Ten updates everywhere. Wisconsin controlled its destiny in the leaders' division, but the Badgers are down by 10 to Illinois at the break. Joe Paterno diagnosed with cancer. You'll hear from his son, Jay, on that diagnosis. And Oklahoma State, after losing last night, what does that mean? Mark and Lou have opinions. Brad Edwards also weighs in. We'll see you in a bit. All right, Reese. Meanwhile, Nebraska with one timeout. Minute 51 on the clock, taking over on its 32, and Martinez with a short throw that's dropped by Kyler Reed, incomplete. You know, Chris, that drives a coach nuts right there. You got a quarterback that maybe struggles throwing the ball a little bit. You teach and coach those receivers, and you get angry with them. You get a chance to help your quarterback, help your darn quarterback make a play. That gives him certainly a strange delivery, but who cares because the ball's on time and on target. No safety to the right side. And Martinez looking to run the football here. And he gets pushed out at the 37-yard line by Koufax. So gain of five. It'll bring up third and five. Clock stop with a minute 40 remaining here in the half. You know, half completely dominated by Michigan. And Nebraska's only down by seven points. They find a way to get out of here with a field goal or score some points. That's a major win in this first half for Nebraska. They've had the ball for eight minutes. 20 for Michigan. They look for Michigan to take a timeout. Nebraska doesn't get the first. Martinez with time. Everybody covered. And Martinez is sacked at the 34 by Van Bergen. The ball came out as well. Let's see if they rule Martinez down. They are. The Nebraska ball, Martinez ruled down at the 35, even though Michigan came out of there with the football. The ruling on the field is that the runner was down, fourth down. Brady Hook immediately ran to the official on his sideline to get the T.O. That's their second shot. Timeout. So the clock stopped with 132. Let's see here if Martinez is down. Yep, before the ball comes out. Uh, it looked like a good call on the field. He's down there and he has possession. So it's look. Nebraska ball for it down. Luxury for Greg Madison showing like he was going to blitz and they're creating pressure by illusion then getting that pressure with just four which makes them stable in the background with seven. You know what I'm seeing? I'm not seeing receivers getting open. I'm not seeing on both sides of the ball. I'm seeing quarterbacks hold the ball and you can be critical of the quarterback. You have to get rid of the ball but you have to get rid of the ball to an open receiver. I don't see any separation from the Nebraska receivers against Michigan defense. That possession lasted 19 seconds. So Michigan will have a timeout about a minute and a half to work with. And a dynamic quarterback in Denard Robinson. Great punt by Maher. Gallon backing up, fields it at the 11, makes the first man miss. Gallon still going across the 25 and finally chopped down at the 27. Now there is a penalty flag back in the backfield. At the 38-yard line, 54 punt, 16-yard return. But let's see what the penalty flag is for. You got a mental air. If it's against Michigan, there was some hand fighting going on away from the play that has nothing to do with the play. If you're blocking 40 yards away, you just shadow the guy, then you go after him. It was fourth down and seven. After the play was over, personal foul. Number 92 of the kicking team rolled it ahead at the 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. That's on the long snapper, P.J. Mangieri. So Michigan will have the ball at its 48 with Denard Robinson. One timeout, 118 to work with. The other side of this is Robinson has had, obviously, turnover issues. 
And there's still time on the clock here if Nebraska can force a turnover. I know it's difficult for anybody to swallow, especially a former head coach in our booth, but the turnover issue doesn't bother me the way he's moving this offense today. Well, they still have time to be patient. A minute 18, patient, a minute 18 with a timeout. You don't have to force anything here tonight. Be smart. Ball on the Michigan 43. And here's Toussaint. And got a lot out of nothing. Five-yard gain should have lost yardage. Eric Martin on the stop. Michigan saving its timeout. Nebraska's defense, they brought the corner inside so the corner couldn't get blocked by the wide receiver. Great call by Bo Pliny. That's that's when you like to see that's great chess match. That's a great call by uh, the defensive staff. Robinson stepping up and he'll run trying to get out of bounds to stop the clock. He did not brought down inbounds at the 49 yard line. Levante David on the tackle. Michigan still with a timeout. Clock running 40 seconds and counting. That's Levante Davis 13th tackle of the day of the half. Wow. Denard missed it running lane right there. If he would have cut it up inside instead of trying to shoot to the outside, he's still running. Clock inside 25 seconds for third down and two. Michigan taking a ton of time off the clock, and now Robinson in trouble. Gets away from a couple of men. Stays in, and a flag down in the secondary, so the clock will stop here with 40, with nine seconds left in the ball at the Michigan 49. They were a mess on that series there, on offense. I'll tell you what's so clear to see, both these teams are just not made offensively for no huddle. Hurry up. In passing yeah, situations, passing, they're just yeah. not made for it. Now the clock reads zero here. But it stopped, it looked like with nine seconds left. Nice stop and stand by the Nebraska Cornhusker defense. The other question is, is there a, a 10 second runoff in this situation? And it depends on how much time's on the clock as well, whether that went in the half. It is when you talk about strategy and scheme, when you saw Bo Pelini and Carl Pelini, the defense corner, sink the corner inside and get in an unblockable position to stop that speed nice, sweep, that's it? really good. I mean, that, that's, you talk about all the time in the film room, that's what they're coming up with. Only number 12 of the offense penalties decline fourth down clock operator please reset game clock to 12 seconds now let me ask you a question here. second the clock will start on my ready the clock will start on my ready fourth down and four what do you do do you, do you punt the football here or do you take a shot Try to pick up the first down, maybe get in the field goal range. I'll take a Hail Mary shot right here. But if it's, it's incomplete, the, there the, might be time on the clock. The clock started on his ready, so now the clock is going to run out. Yep, so the clock runs out, you have to run a play. That's the end of the first Michigan wasn't up to the line of scrimmage there, though. They heard that. Shouldn't, it, shouldn't they have been up to the line of scrimmage? I would have taken a shot, throw Hail Mary. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Lucky Cornhuskers to be down seven. Check in with Quint down on the field. Coach, from where you uh, stand, what, what was the single key development in that first half? Well, I think our defense is playing well. We've run the ball decently. Uh, Got to run it better, I can tell you that. But, uh, you know, I think our kids are playing together. It's going to be a hard-fought game. What's an area that you have to clean up as you look forward? Well, I... <laughs> there's, there's a lot of them. So uh, we just got to keep playing hard. You got one that you got to clean up? Well... Not really. We just got a lot of things to clean up. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Interesting answer by Brady Hope. Michigan had the ball for 21 and a half minutes. Only a seven point lead, though, over Nebraska. So we go to Reese Davis in the studio with a Bud Light halftime report. I guarantee, I guarantee those guys won't be speechless. Welcome back to 
ESPN's coverage of college football presented by Cars.com. Michigan on top, 17-10 with Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman. I'm Dave Pash. Denard Robinson in previous Big Ten games averaging under 60 yards rushing. But in that first half, guys, he had 75 yards on the ground and a touchdown. As we look at our Liberty Drive Mutual uh, Drive recap, you can see Denard looked like the Denard of old. Well, we talked about it at the beginning of the game. Not only on called runs like the speed option here, but he's bringing a little bit of burst to his game. This is what I like, the decision to tuck it and go. If your first option isn't there, then use your God-given ability to run the football with burst and vision. And when he does that, he puts so much pressure on a defense. Well, the Nebraska middle linebacker, Levante David, if he doesn't play the way he's playing the first half, 13 tackles, this game's out of hand. It's a close game because of Nebraska's still able not to give up the big play. Why? Levante David's playing one of his best games of the year against tackling Denard Robson. Two times, Chris, I remember he could have had a big play yeah. if he didn't make those shoe tackle, uh, shoe, uh, shoe string tackles. On shoelace. On shoelace. Nebraska will get the football to start the third quarter. Amir Abdullah and Kenny Bell are deep. It'll be Bell rattling the goal line. And Bell up to the 20 yard line. And he fumbled the ball. Michigan's got it at the 33. Courtney Avery recovers it for the Wolverines. Chris talks about it all the time. Excellent job on the coverage. Puts his face right on the ball, Chris. Yeah, that's an excellent job by Joe Robinson, number 82. And he wrapped up. the gate in front of the ball, and he wrapped and up. He wrapped up. Excellent and job there on tap. And causing the fumble. So Michigan takes over at the 32-yard line. And Robinson looking to run the football again, and he doesn't get much. Pushed out of bounds after a gain of one. That's the 17th attempt for Robinson on the ground. That's about his average on the season. And they actually give him three yards there. And once again, that's a, that's a direct run. They once again want to see if he gets back to the spread offense where you're going to read the defender, therefore eliminated a defender. That was not. That was a direct run. And that's what is most effective and also off of the scramble when there's no receiver open. How about Michigan doubling up Nebraska in plays run in total offense? Only a seven-point lead. Play action and a quick toss to Gallon. And Gallon inside the 20. Gallon inside the 10. All the way to the seven yard line. 23 yard pass play before Dennard and Stafford get to Jeremy Gallon. Great play call, but even better execution. Denard Scrap pulls out to the left like he's running a speed option, flips it back, well blocked by the offense line. To get the defense to flow one way, throw a screen back across the formation. That's great uh, misdirection play by Michigan. Toussaint hit by Meredith at the point of attack and driven back. You know, having a weapon, Chris, you've been saying this all day, having a weapon like Denard Robinson, when you start to sprint him out to the left, the whole defense is going to chase him. That yeah. sets up the misdirection on um, screen plays and throwbacks. That's what, you know, if you have a quarterback that's not a threat, those aren't those that great of plays. But the defense has to react to a player like Denard Robinson. That's what you do is you go and press that coverage to take away the screen, meaning press get up on the receivers. That eliminates that pass. Here's Robinson on second and goal. He'll run the option and keep and Moore run into his own man. The center Moore, Terrence Moore, was there defensively for Nebraska, so it'll be third and goal from just inside the five. Well, Terrence Moore does a great job because Moore misses his block. You see the center pulling, which is tough duty. Now watch Moore turn inside. Didn't get the vision on Terrence Moore, who did his job by getting on the rear end of Moore as he pulls. He gets right on his back hip. Follows him right to the play. Excellent job by Terrence Moore. Beautiful. And he's played very well this year, replacing Jared Crick, who is out for the year with a torn pec muscle. Now it's third down and goal from the five. They'll spread it out here. Robinson in shotgun. And Robinson to throw. Robinson going in zone, and it is incomplete, but a flag. Should be interference on Farrell, defending Roundtree. 
it's clear that Al Borges has his target. His target is Terrell. Anytime there's been a crucial down as far as throwing the football, he is the guy they're attacking. Pass interference, number 23, defense. Penalty occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be spotted. Two yard line, first down. Hmm. Well, first and goal from the two. Do you guys agree with the call there? No, I don't. That's tough duty. I mean, the ball's underthrown. He didn't turn around, though. He didn't back to the ball. Well, he's playing man to man. And you got to be able to turn around, but he played the hands. Now, to me, that's a tough call. It's a tough call to make in that situation. They go with three backs in the backfield here. First and goal at the two. It's Toussaint trying to cut it outside. He'll lose yardage. Levante David there again. 14th tackle. That one for a two-yard loss. You know, the question you have to ask yourself, and I watch it every week, and you do as well, Chris, and Dave. How many teams in the country can line up on the two-yard line, turn around, and hand it off? Days of old Michigan, that was no doubt. There's big, big Michigan offensive linemen be able to rock it in there. But how many teams in college football? The defenses are so good nowadays, that's hard to turn around and just pound the ball in there. Yeah, here comes your play action off of this look. Robinson running the option. He'll keep, and he gets down to about the one-yard line. So they'll bring up third down and goal. There's an injured Cornhusker at the six-yard line. It's Eric Martin starting defensive end. Guys, what is uh, the call here? Third down and goal at the one. I go back to the Iowa game a couple weeks ago when they were down here. It was straight drop back passes, but it seems like they've gone away from that in this ball game and gotten Robinson on the perimeter. And one thing they're not successful doing is running it right up the gut and now physically what they've been successful is right there at number 16. Get him on the perimeter. You go the option one way. If you're comfortable, run the option again. That gives yourself the best chance to get the ball in the end zone with 16 making that decision. Forward. We'll get a timeout and come back with Eric Martin injured for Nebraska. Third and goal, Michigan from the one. Moments ago, Eric Martin getting helped off the field after being injured on that second down of Michigan run by Denard Robinson. You can see, Chris, here, Nebraska's committing 10 defenders to the line of scrimmage. It's hard to run a play against 10, defeater, 10 defenders within four yards of the ball. Yeah, and the only chance you have is running the ball outside and trusting the speed of Denard Robinson. When you have 10 defenders and three levels within four yards of the ball, you're not going to run it inside. Third down goal on the one-yard line. These two teams tied for second in the Legends division, a game back of Michigan State. A BCS at large could be at stake as well in this ball game. Under center is Robinson. Robinson will keep heading for the end zone. His second touchdown. His 20th carry of the ball game, Denard Robinson gets his 14th rushing touchdown and second of the game. There's a reason why you can't run inside. So as Nebraska, you got to anticipate that they know they can't run inside, so they come outside. And there's the reason why they should never been fooled because I'm going to show you in a second. Devin Gardner has not played one snap today at quarterback. He played most of the second half after the injury to Robinson last week. Got to read your keys. They never lie. Omame, the big offensive guard. Take a look. Number 65. He's going to take you to the play. Trust. Don't worry about this window dressing. Trust. Please trust. No, nope. you don't trust. Everybody jumps inside. Austin Cassidy, number eight. If you stay outside, you make a play. What do you have for us, Quint? Spoke to Bo Pelini at, at halftime about Denard Robinson. You know, he told us Friday that his worst nightmare was seeing Denard Robinson scramble. That has been the case today. He said three things he pointed to. One, a bull rush up the inside to kind of decrease the running lanes. Two, contain on the perimeter. And then three, tackling in space. His guys have got to make one-on-one -on -one tackles against Michigan's quarterback. Well, they also got to read their keys. When you see a pulling guard, trust him. Don't jump inside. Get your eyes and see both the guard through the backfield. If you can read both through the backfield, then you make a play. 
Keep in mind, Nebraska came back from a 21-point deficit earlier this year to beat Ohio State, largest comeback in school history. And there's almost a half to go. And boy, they thought about bringing it out when Abdullah took a knee. It'll come out to the 20. Just three points separate Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart heading into the final race for the championship. Now they'll go head-to-head -head for NASCAR's ultimate prize. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes with the Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami. Coverage begins on ESPN Sunday at 2 Eastern. Dave, Carl Edwards is very comfortable at that track in Miami. So I'm told you've been doing a lot of scouting this week and not just football. Yes, I am. Or volleyball, which you threw out there in the first half. Any other sports you want to touch? Here's Martinez, the late pitch to Burkhead. And Burkhead gets about eight yards before he's wrapped up by Mike Martin. They score on a similar play against Penn State when Martinez held on to it to the last possible second and then pitched it to Burkhead last week. Now, Coach, if you're Nebraska, you go tempo here because that's when you had some success in the first half. I'm doing everything you could possibly do to keep your game off schedule. We talk about that every week. I'll hand it off at Duel. And he's got the first down and more. Abdullah all the way to the 45-yard line. That's a 16-yard run for the true freshman. Desmond Morgan, another true flash on the stop. Just to finish my thought, Chris, their average third down attempt in the first half was 12 yards, third and 12. The national average is under 10% success on third and long. And yeah, Michigan's going to call a timeout here. And actually, an injury timeout. You got Jordan Kovacs shaken up. Kovacs had played 28 straight games before missing the Purdue contest a few weeks back with an knee injury. Interesting. It could be gamesmanship here. Tempo, tempo, tempo. And you saw some of the Nebraska coaches raise their hands. And what's the deal? Because Kovacs, uh, I'm not questioning whether he did or didn't, but he didn't go down until they were lined up ready to get a play. And Michigan was trying to substitute. I see it all. I just, I, I, I trust everybody, but I cut the cards. You know what I mean, Dave? <laughs> Let's see. He went down after they were ready. Let's take a look. He's up. Looks pretty healthy there. See if Jordan's coming into the play. Tried to make the tackle there and took a uh, shoe to the helmet yeah. there. Does a good job. Got his boys falling on him. And it's not a bad idea. I'm all for it. But they were lined up, ready to go, and they were trying to substitute. Then Jordan smartly went down to buy your team time to get the substitution in. I disagree. I think he was hurt. Saying he wasn't. Saying very convenient that it worked out for him like that. First down of the Nebraska 45-yard line. Burkhead grabbed by Morgan. The Burkhead pushing the car. It's about four yards there. Well, Chris, I want to say that we do coach players that if you're hurt, go down. Yeah. So many times a player starts to try to limp off, and that just does nothing except for confuse your substitution. That's a great point. Fans see that. You are coached. If you're hurt, about go that. down. Plus, if they're running tempo, it buys you time. All part of the game. Martinez will keep. Mike Martin is there. Got off a block. Made a play. All Big Ten second team last year. Might be first team all Big Ten this year. But Greg Madison, defense coordinator at Michigan, the signature to his defense is pursuit to the ball. You're going to see nothing but maize and blue around Taylor Martinez. That's a great picture. That's Greg Madison. That's, that's Michigan's defense right now. That wasn't that way a year ago. Swarming like locusts. The big difference between this year and last year. Nebraska yet to convert on third down. They have to get just inside the 45-yard line. It'll be a quarterback draw, and Martinez not going to get there. Got only a yard before Martin made the tackle. Boy, he missed it. Watch how he misses this. Watch the Nebraska offensive line seal to the right. Take a look now. Look at the seal. Here's the hole. Look at this giant hole. He misses his two lead, lead blockers, and he cuts right back in to the defensive line. He's still running. He rarely makes that type of mistake. Wow, that's a blown opportunity right there. Poor vision. And now Myron will punt for the fifth time. Try to pin Gallon in the Wolverines D. Walk that down, David. Oh, Myron in trouble with a snap, and he got the kick block. It's picked up by Nebraska, but Michigan will take over at midfield. And Maher is down.
He's down inside the 40-yard line, and he is not only their punter, but he's their field goal kicker and one of the best in the country. The backup is a true freshman. First and 10. And Michigan's going to have the ball in midfield. Good snap. He let the ball get into his chest instead of going out and snatching. And there's no roughing or running into the kicker in that situation. You have the block there, Furman and Hawthorne for Michigan, so no penalty flag. Tell you what, Dave, if Michigan takes his ball down and scores, it's going to be tough for Nebraska to come back. Yeah, we mentioned that 21-point comeback earlier against Ohio State, but tough to do that twice in one year, especially since it hadn't happened in school history prior to this year, that game against Ohio State. We've seen a totally different offense than we witnessed at Iowa. Are we not? Mm -hmm. You're right. And the question is, when did this change, and why did it change? Because it changed because they need him to be the main focus of the offense and nobody else. That's why it changed, because that gives them the best chance to win. Toussaint picks a hole. And a Michigan first down, gain of 11, before David makes another Nebraska tackle. You're starting to see the wear and tear on the Nebraska defensive line. Michigan's offense line is getting great movement. Michigan's held the ball for 25 minutes now compared to 11s to Nebraska. What's that mean? That means Nebraska's defense has been on there far too long for only being in the middle of the third quarter. And look at the time of possession. Over 25 minutes for Michigan. They've run 50 plays to 26 for Nebraska. Tucson able to get outside. And has another first down. And a flag, a late hit out of bounds as well. You gotta get on the same page with the defensive end and the safety. Cameron Meredith and Austin Cassidy both get caught inside. Nobody's responsible for contain. Somebody has to have contain and force the ball back into the on block players. You'll see on the replay that both Meredith and Cassidy. Personal foul on the defense. Number 90, right hit, out of bounds. After distance to the goal, automatic. First down. So they get, Terrence Moore. They get caught inside. Take a look at what I'm talking about. You have to have a contain. That means you have to have somebody outside. You see Meredith right there. He gets caught inside. You see Cassidy come up. He gets caught inside. You can't give up a corner. Then you got to be smart. Terrence Moore has to pull off of that and understand the down situation and not throw the guy into the net. Inside the Nebraska 15-yard line. And here's Hopkins. He's in. And a flag. Touchdown, Michigan. Let's see what the penalty flag is. One official spotted the ball down at the two-yard line. Another said he was in. Touchdown. He clearly was in, unless his knee went down to the two. But again, let's see what the penalty is. It may not matter. They marked the penalty maybe where it is at the two-yard line. As they talk about this, Urban, I want you to address this because I think it's an important point that people miss. Offensive coordinators, they find their rhythm, don't they? They feel like they get in a zone a little bit. And I think Al Bohr just right Personal now is in that foul, zone. Face mask, number 17, offense. 15 yards, spot of the foul, will repeat. First down. And that's why they were concerned with where the penalty flag went, because it's a spot foul. It was downfield on Jeremy Jackson defending Dennard, trying to spring Hopkins. And you can see it there. Good call by the official. Very good call. And you, you like the receiver, Chris, blocking and giving effort down the field, but you got to be smart that. Get your hands aside, play with a good base, good bend, and those things don't happen. So that wipes out a touchdown. First down and 13. And Robinson into the backfield to Saab, and he'll lose yardage. Oh, well, he got cracked at the 21-yard line. Alfonso Whaley was there for Nebraska. So they lose yardage on that play. Chris, that could be a game-changer penalty. You have second down and 16 instead of a touchdown. That's a huge penalty. Don't forget they're going into the wind. Gibbons long on the year. It's 42. That was really done to today. Yep. His long previously was 38. That scramble time here for Denard. Robinson rolling out and throwing, and it's caught inside the 10 by Drew Dilio. And knocked out at the five. He's short of the first down marker. 
But a good play there. It'll be third down on a yard. This is why I like the call because he only has really one option. He has two, but only one side of the field. If neither option is there, that's when he can tuck and run and become most dangerous. Dilio wide open, delivered a strike. And the play was called to get him in a manageable third down. I know you're tired of me saying that, Chris, but it's third oh, down God. now, third down to two. I believe you. Very good play call. Get yourself the nard because he could have ran the ball as well. Get yourself in a manageable situation. Quarterback run, Levante David right in the face of the quarterback, Robinson. He did not get it. It's fourth and one. Do you take the points if you're Michigan? The way Nebraska's offense is playing, I'm going to kick the field goal, take the points, get a 17-point lead. Absolutely. Three-score lead. Take the three-possession lead, absolutely. That's what they're going to do. They'll bring on Gibbons. That would have been a great conversation now if Nebraska's offense is cooking, because that's a whole different animal. Then you go for it because points are a premium. Possessions are premium now. So that touchdown wiped out because of the penalty on Jeremy Jackson, and now... A 22-yard field goal try. Tough angle here for Gibbons. And either a bat snap or a fake. Dilio to the one. He got the first down. It'll be first and goal at the one. Hard to tell if that was a decision made by Dilio. If that was a call fake or a bad exchange. Let's see. Call fake. Oh, no, that was a call fake. You see the blocking scheme. It tells you it was a call flake. Or fake. And there you have our guy again, Big Patrick Omame, pulling and leading the way. So first down and goal at the one. He did not get in. You can tell by that replay. Here's Tucson. Touchdown. Rushing touchdown for Tucson. He had eight rushing attempts in 2010, but he's become the featured back for Michigan, giving them another weapon on offense. And they're going to have a three score lead with five minutes to play. It is 31 to 10, Michigan. The Wolverines looking for their ninth win, trying to keep Big Ten championship hopes and maybe a BCS at large shot alive. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Cadillac. Legendary coaches at these schools, Bob Devaney. His first year as head coach was the last time Nebraska played in Ann Arbor back in 1962. Of course, Tom Osborne, now the athletic director, and Bo Pelini in his fourth year. 38 and 14 record, but his team trails Brady Hoax Wolverines 31 to 10 at the five minute mark here in the third quarter. Guys, listen to what's happened on special teams for Nebraska in the first 10 minutes. Fumbled kickoff, bad exchange leading to a blocked punt, and they allow a fake field goal conversion. You can see the execution of Michigan taking advantage of the missteps of the Cornhuskers. I tell you, every coach has been there. It's caving in on. It's time to sell your team down. Get some first downs, get some going here on offense. And Marlowe trying to provide a spark. It's driven out of bounds at the 25-yard line. No flag for a late hit. Delonte Hollowell on the tackle. Nebraska ball when we come back down 21. Time now for today's game track brought to you by Bud Light. Nebraska with 96 rushing yards, but 23 of those came by a wide receiver. Rex Burkhead held the 17 rushing yards on six attempts. You see the time of possession favoring Michigan. Part of that is Nebraska's fault. They have not converted on third down yet. And they're down 31-10. Burkhead normally such a factor. Last week we saw him under center a lot. Saw him throw a couple passes. And uh, we have not seen that formation yet today. Absolutely no rhythm established by Nebraska on offense. Burkhead isn't even in the game right now. You got a duel in the backfield. Winner of this game.
still might have a chance at a Big Ten title as Martinez has dropped for no game. How about this Michigan defense and the job that Greg Madison has done? I think last year they gave up 35 points per game. Now they're down to 15, fifth in the country. Same players, a much different scheme, but that's not what Greg's all about. Greg's all about pursuit to the ball, effort to the ball, and get gang tackling. You've seen that here today. They give out an assistant coach of the year award. He's got to be considered for what he's done here. Coming from the Ravens, and he was a D coordinator here at one time at a Lloyd Carr. And as Martinez throws low, and it's almost intercepted by J.T. Floyd. Now it's third and nine. Nebraska gets in that kind of game, Chris. You have no chance. No chance. You, if they have to play comeback on second down along, third down along, this game could get even more out of hand. And the other thing is, why they have the win, you might want to think about taking some type of shot downfield. Because Taylor Martinez's arm isn't strong enough to cut through the wind if he's playing into the wind. Third down and nine. Nebraska 0 for 6 on third down. And Martinez throws incomplete trying to hit Kenny Bell. Let's check in with Reese now as it's fourth down here. Here's 31-10, Michigan on top and about to get the ball back. Maher, who was hurt on a punt block, is out there to kick it to Jeremy Gallon. And he nails this one as Gallon lets it bounce over his head, and he's not going to field it, and Nebraska will down it around the four-yard line. About a 70-yard punt, 68 to be exact. Three of the top five teams in action tonight on the ESPN Networks. 8 Eastern ABC. It'll be Oregon and USC. Ducks have won nine in a row. Could it be an Oregon LSU rematch for the BCS Championship or an Alabama LSU rematch for the championship? I'll tell you, that game last night surprised me, Chris. I know Iowa State, Coach Rhodes has done an excellent job there, but what I've seen out of Oklahoma State this year, that shocked me. And Big 12 sometimes has a little lapse in defense every now and then as a conference. Here's Toussaint, and if it may be a yard spun down by Cameron Meredith. Nebraska needs a takeaway, huh? They got one earlier, and that led to a touchdown and interception by defensive lineman Terrence Moore. At the very least, a three and out to create some type of field position for an offense that isn't built to go 70, 80, 90 yards. At least today, they're not built to go that way. Denard Robinson has played every snap today for Michigan. It's been a while since we've said that in a game this year. Toussaint trying to pick a hole. Levante David wraps him up at the nine. So it's a gain of three. Third and six now for Michigan. What do you do here? How do you handle this if you're Michigan? I drive the stake. What I mean by that is I take a shot. You can work the field. I do the little rollout pass to give Denard Robinson two options to the field. A little high option, a low option, and my third option is tuck it and go. Well, they got playing into the wind right here. I'm, I'm keeping the ball on the ground, running a little bit if you have to get the ball out of there with a punt, punt it. Half roll by Robinson. And he's going to go deep, going for round tree. Two defenders there, incomplete. Oh, Stafford had a chance to pick it off at midfield, but he could not hang on. Nebraska does force a punt. Well, they went with I thought they would go with, but he made the poor decision. Again, throw it into coverage. If nothing's there, tuck it and run, because I believe he would have got close to the first down if he would have chose to use his feet. So Hogger up will punt now from his end zone. See if Nebraska comes after it here, or if they try to set up the return for Abdullah. And it's a short kick, Abdullah on the run at the 35. Abdullah brought down inside the 31-yard line. Excellent field position for Nebraska. Here's Reese. 
All right, David, it's time for an innovative look at the Oklahoma offense brought to you by AT&T. Oklahoma takes on Baylor tonight. You see a couple of receivers to Landry Jones left. Roy Finch is his running back, sends him in motion. Nice fake on the screen. Holds the defense, in this case, Texas, just long enough to let Kenny Stills get into the open, beat the defense for a touchdown. That's what Baylor's going to have to deal with against the Sooners tonight. And Reese Martinez off play action, going to go deep for Bell, broken up. Incomplete, Troy Wolfolk, the uh, safety, who made the play for Michigan. It's a four vertical pass here. Uh, Taylor Martinez tried. I made this comment earlier, Chris, that when you have a quarterback struggling, go up and make a play. At some point, the receiver has to go help that quarterback. You don't see that from the Nebraska uh, set of receivers. We watched film the other day, and you said you don't see the wow factor from the Nebraska receivers. You have to go make that play to help the quarterback out. That's where they're lacking. Second and ten, great field position after the bad punt. Martinez in trouble, and along the sideline, the pass is caught, and it's a first down at the 19. Tim Marlowe, who continues to make plays for Nebraska. Nice job of being aware of where you are in the field, stopping your feet. Excellent. And Excellent. you got to complete the catch, and he did. When you go to bounds, in field awareness, just feeling it and getting his feet down and not leaving his feet to catch a ball. A lot of times receivers jump to catch. Here's Burkhead, finds a seam, and he's tripped up inside the 15-yard line. Floyd on the stop. He got to about the 12, so second and short. Nebraska will hurry up offense here, Chris. Burkett again, and driven to the ground at the 10, short of the first down. Hawthorne there defensively, third and one coming up. Nice job by Jordan Kovacs coming up from the safety position, and good open field tap on Burkett. Give it to him again. Wouldn't be surprised, same play. There it is. Burkett, as Kovacs try to keep him from stretching it out, and we'll see. Yeah, he did. He got the first down, able to stretch the ball out before he went out of bounds. So first and goal for Nebraska. That's the first third down conversion today for the Cornhuskers. And it took almost three quarters. You hate to see him come out of the game three times in a row because he's your best runner, especially inside. You got a cold back coming off the bench. Here's a pitch. And it's green inside the five. Mike Martin and Heininger there at about the four-yard line. So gain of four, second and goal. It's the first time we've seen all day. Even when they scored earlier, it was off three, three quick plays. This is the first sustained drive we've seen that by the Nebraska offense. And down for Michigan is freshman Brennan Beyer, one of the guys that, Chris, you were talking about in the first half like Morgan and Countess, freshmen that have played big roles for Michigan on defense, turning things around for that group. Well, there's a statement to be made there. When you have three true freshmen that are big time players and contributors on your defense, that kind of shows where a little bit of their talent might have been depleted on the defensive side over the years. And that shows what Brady Hoke is doing as far as recruiting. And once they get the talent that they need at Michigan, they're a Michigan defense now. They'll really be a Michigan defense when all that talent starts rolling in. Meanwhile, just noticed that Wisconsin leads at Illinois. The Badgers trying to keep their hopes alive of playing in the Big Ten Championship. Now, Michigan would have to win twice and have Michigan State lose twice, but the Spartans playing Indiana today. Nebraska needs to win twice and have Michigan State lose a game. But still, if Michigan can win here and beat Ohio State next week, they got a shot at a BCS at large, even if they don't play in the Big Ten title game. Same for Nebraska, if it can win out. They play Iowa at home on Friday. They're down three scores here with a minute to go in the third. Burkhead pitches and walking in is Abdullah for the touchdown. How about that play? 
you see that one before, Evan? I'm not. I got to look at that one again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that hand was off. double option off a handoff. Option. It's a quadruple option. Who pitched that? It was Burkhead, Burkhead. that pitched it after Martinez and I'm Burkhead were sharing pencil. the ball for about three yards. Draw that one up. Holy That's cow. a quadruple option. Martinez. I have never, to answer your question, I've never seen Have you seen that? No. Well, up to, you're better to say it. I mean, you've been doing this a lot longer than I have. You've never seen it. No, I'm looking forward to seeing this again here. If you ever get back into coaching, will we see that in a red zone someday? I would run that. Second rushing touchdown for Abdullah. He had one last week against Penn State. That's big. Getting it down to two scores with under a minute to go in the third. I'm going to apologize to our viewers before we do this. I've never seen this play. They're going to hand off to Burkhead. Looks like he's reading the defensive end. The defensive end closed. Wow. That's well executed. Now I have to find out if he read the defensive end first. That's a legitimate triple option with two different guys carrying the ball. I've never seen that. That's a tough play to defend now. He is. He's re he, he, when you see Taylor Martinez keeps his hands in the mesh, that's called the mesh, when you sink the ball into the fullback's belly, that's, he's reading the defensive end. Defensive end closed. He handed the ball to Burkhead. Burkhead must have pitched off the next yeah. defender. Well, he reads the corner. The wow. corner's coming up to close, and then you're outflanked because you have Dula running as the pitch man. The key. Boy, football's a great game, ain't it, Chris? I mean, yeah, that's they, they sit there and work yeah. in those film rooms to come up with a play like that. The key on that drive was the punt from Mars, 69 yards yeah. at Penn, Michigan deep, and they went three and out, and actually were better off after the Michigan punt than they would have with the interception that was dropped because they got the ball at the 30-yard line of Michigan to start that drive. I know I'm going to beat this play up now, but think of the trust you have in Burkhead. Okay, that's your point right that's there. Why, now, I know why we don't. a lot of people don't run those plays. Do you imagine how many tailbacks can take a handoff then pitch off the next defender? Not many. Here's Odoms. He'll run it out for Michigan. And Odoms gets nailed at the 24-yard line. Took a shot from Jim Ebke. Okay, there's no question. Taylor Martinez is reading the defensive end. The defensive end closed. He's going to give the ball. Burkhead now is going to come pitch off the next defender outside, which is a strong safety. Now look at the reacts from Coach Madison and Brady Hook. What's that? I don't know. I've never seen that. Get the chalkboard out, boys. <laughs> <Look at that>. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Let's see. Well, let's make sure we put that in our playbook. By the way, there was holding on the kick return, so that backs Michigan up inside its 15-yard line. Opportunity again for this Nebraska defense to help their offense with field position. Probably won't get time. The quarter will run out. Tell you what, Chris, this one's not over now. No, no. the ball back in field position. It's a two, two score game. Here's Toussaint. And no running room for him, brought down after a gain of three by Steinkohler. And let's check in with Reese. All right, guys, looks as if it will be Wisconsin and Penn State next week to decide the leaders because the Badgers, after falling behind 14-0, back in control. Monty Ball going in. 30th touchdown overall for the season for Ball. It's 28-17. Wisconsin's on top. And the Gators, they're sleepwalking early. They're on top of Furman, 27-22. Second half just about to start. All right, Reese, it's 31-17 here, Michigan leading. Final stages of the third quarter, Toussaint. It's two to the 19-yard line. So when we start the fourth quarter, it'll be third down and five. Nebraska has a little bit of momentum right now as we start the fourth quarter. Back in Ann Arbor as we start the fourth, Michigan on top of Nebraska, 31-17. One of the oldest and most bitter rivalries in college football featured tonight on the ESPN networks at 10:15 Eastern. It is Stanford and Cal, the big game, the 114th edition. Meanwhile, Michigan State is clobbering Indiana, so if Michigan beats Nebraska, both Michigan and Nebraska would be eliminated from contention for the Big Ten championship. Michigan State would go to the Big Ten title game, but the winner of this game would still have a chance at a BCS at large. 
Third and four for Denard Robinson and the Wolverines. Robinson hit, and he's going to lose yardage. And Michigan will have to punt. Well, they had 11 guys. 11 guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Go, Urban. They run a zone option. You're supposed to pitch off the defensive end out here. Denard has it. For some reason, he doesn't pitch the ball. You can see the whole defense is sealed here by Michigan. That's just a misread by Denard. Well blocked, well executed up front by Michigan. I think he had it in his mind that he's running it no matter what. It was Josh Williams who made the play, replacing an injured Eric Martin. Cameron Meredith was shaken up as well on that drive as that punt was almost blocked, and a flag comes down. Now is it running or roughing the kicker? It's fourth and seven, so if it's running into the kicker, it would still be fourth and two. But if it's roughing the kicker, it'll be a first down. Will Richards, the Nebraska player who hit the kicker that time, Will Hagara. Well, he just missed the football, too. Just missed the football. This is a game-changing call right here. This official is going to change the game. It's either running in or roughing. Personal foul. Oh, big. Roughing the kicker, number 19. Of the receiving team. That's a 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Oh no. Is that roughing? I don't know. Do you call roughing there, guys? Take a look. Let's see. And he hit the foot. It's dangerous. So I can understand why they would call roughing because you're run you're, you're going right at him. And you hit his leg while he's in the air. Again, that's a huge call because if it's running into the kicker, it's still fourth down to Michigan punts. Now the Wolverines have the ball on their 32. They go back to work with Tucson. First down run of about 14 to the 46-yard line. Talk about the self-inflicted penalties by Nebraska on special teams. has killed them and also the dual threat of Tucson and Robinson on the ground. Look at the lateral cut. So many guys do not have that ability to make that stop and go lateral sideways cut. In somewhat of the same atmosphere as Banner Sanders, but let's not get carried away. Let's not. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just talking about that lateral cut, just to put a little bit of oh, some movement there. And it looked like Robinson wanted the ball to be snapped, but the center, Molk, didn't snap it. Michigan is the least penalized team in the Big Ten. Fifth fewest penalties in the country. Prior to the snap, snap infraction on the offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty, still first down. But let's not, you know, let's not disregard that a lot of Nebraska's mistakes have come off the third part of the third phase of the game. Boy, that was interesting. He yeah. didn't snap it there. Special teams. That's first and 15 at the 41. Tucson breaks a couple tackles, gets to the 48 for seven yards. Andrew Green on the tackle, so it'll be second down. And about seven. Nebraska's defense is there in Michigan to throw a deep ball. I'm telling you, they have it if they want it. They are selling out at the line of scrimmage. Now would be the time to do it. Got the wind at your back here at midfield. Look at rather do it. You'd rather do it on first down, but it's still a manageable position. Second down and medium. Robinson audibly here. Plenty of time on the play clock. Tucson, and he gets whacked at the 48-yard line by Stafford, short of the first down. Third down coming up. I think on the next first and 10, if indeed there's another first and 10 on this drive, that's when you'll see Michigan take its shot down the field. Second and seven, Nebraska's defense was a little bit more conservative with the safeties back. Thirty-three minutes to fourteen possession time difference so far. And Nebraska is still in this ball game, only a two-score difference. That and the special teams miscues for the Cornhuskers. Third down and four. Robinson to throw. His pass is caught for a first down at the forty-yard line by Odoms. 
Bernard does a nice job setting his feet. It's zero coverage. You can see the safeties are down. Beat man coverage. Nice job, Denard Robbins. He's playing his, so far, other than the turnover, he's playing the best game I've seen him play so far this year. He's right. accounted for three touchdowns, two rushing, one passing. And he just seems like he's back to playing like Denard Robbins. You watch him on the sideline, you watch his energy. Here's Toussaint, and he gets stood up by Compton. Minimal game. You wonder, guys, as a Compton is shaken up, does it help Denard Robinson to think you're going to play every snap? I mean, in previous games, there's times where he's not even on the field or he's lined up with wide receiver. I'll right? jump on that before Chris yeah. does. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know he's your quarterback. He's not coming out. And then we got a timeout with the injury to Will Compton for Nebraska. Will Compton being helped off the field, another injured Nebraska defensive player. Let's take a look at our BCS standings brought to you by Vizio. You know Oklahoma State's going to drop, so it just depends on whether it's Alabama or Oregon in that number two spot. Alabama has Georgia Southern, Oregon as USC today. Michigan's 18th, and Nebraska's 16th in the BCS standings. Big roughing the punter penalty because the man hit the plant foot of the punter, so it's roughing, especially when the punter's in the air and that happens, you know it's going to get called. Second down and 10 for Robinson. Inside the 40. And Denard trying to get outside. Lost the ball. It's picked up by Koger. And they're going to rule Robinson down before the fumble anyway. It was Cassidy on the tackle. It'll bring up third down and about nine. The ball definitely out there. Now, Koger did pick it up. Play should have continued unless Koger's knee was down when he recovered it. Now, you could change that and change the spot. Back at the round the 40. As of right now, it's third down and nine. Every play's reviewed. Robinson going to go to the end zone in double coverage and it is caught. Touchdown, Martavius Adams. Just a matter of time before they took their shot. Watch the feet. Concentration by Odom. Secure catch. Left foot in. Right foot drags for good measure. Denard Robinson playing with a new confidence, a new life. That was against double coverage. 38-yard touchdown pass, the fourth. Touchdown for Robinson, two through the air, two on the ground. The play is under further review. Now they're going to look to make sure that he completed the catch. It looked from our replay that he did, that when he went to the ground, he continued to possess the football. And watch the official. The official is going to watch him to make sure he has possession of the football. You'll see the left foot right there. Left foot will be down. Watch the right foot drag. The ball secure. But again, Ball's when he goes to the ground, yes. you got to keep it. And from that angle, you can't tell. But the ball's secure. It's not moving around. That's a touchdown, boys. That's that's. Uh... Great, great concentration. But I was watching the official, and the official's eyes never left where the ball was placed. Right, that's the right call. Absolutely the right call. And I love the offensive call by Al Borg, just Urban and I, and you were talking about it. It's just a matter of time because of the, of the man coverage and the safety sitting up inside. Where do you go? Post, post, post when safeties are shallow. Well, Dave made the comments double coverage. It's double coverage, but the, the safeties were so far underneath. It really wasn't double coverage. You got behind the safeties. So a single coverage with outside leverage, and that's you want to throw the Never post outside against outside leverage. leverage. That's my whole point. When you play safeties up, the corner's job is to take away the post first and foremost. Never give up the inside. How about Martavius Odoms? That's only his fourth catch of the year, but it's a second touchdown catch. He had one last week from Devin Gardner against Illinois. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So they, they say they didn't have enough video evidence there to confirm it, but it looked pretty good from our vantage point. Doesn't matter. It's a touchdown, and it's a three-possession game. So that roughing the punter penalty back inside the five-yard line basically 
you know, still a shot, but with the way Nebraska's offense has played and its inability to stop Michigan's offense, a three-score lead with 10 minutes to go. They certainly are in command. So a huge penalty. And it led to a Michigan touchdown as Denard Robinson playing perhaps his best game of the season. Two touchdown passes, two on the ground. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. Uh, special teams have been problematic for Nebraska. Here's Bell on a kick return early in the second half. Fumble the ball, recovered by Michigan. Then Maher had trouble with the snap and had it blocked. And then a fake and a field goal led to a first down, eventually a touchdown. And then roughing the punter when it looked like Nebraska was going to get good field position with momentum. Michigan takes it down and scores a touchdown. So as you look at the special teams problem for Nebraska, here's one for you. Denard Robinson with his 35th career touchdown pass that ties him with Tom Brady for seventh all time. Now Brady, of course, split time with Drew Henson when they are here. for Nebraska and he lost the ball Michigan's got it another special teams blunder as the Huskers are coughing it up and giving Michigan the game Dylan Esterlin with the fumble recovery Michigan will have it inside the Nebraska 25 ball security right there J.B. Fitzgerald actually is the man who had the recovery there for Michigan. Simmons, Floyd on the hit, causes the fumble. Fitzgerald comes up with a fumble recovery for the Wolverines. Toussaint grabbed from behind and smothered by Alonzo Whaley. Loss of three on the play. Next week, Michigan will host Ohio State with an opportunity for its 10th win, assuming the Wolverines hang on here. And a BCS at large, Michigan State is going to play in the Big Ten Championship game. Its opponent yet to be determined, likely either Penn State or Wisconsin. I was with you guys when we did the Michigan, Michigan State game. Completely different looking football team than the Maze and Blue. Completely. Defense are playing like they did. Offense completely different. Special teams completely different. Here's Toussaint wrapped up at the 25 by David for no gain. Now Brady Hoax, interesting. Some of you know this, some of you don't. He refers to Ohio State as Ohio. In fact, they have a clock in the building that says the countdown to the Ohio game. Their last win was in 2003 against Ohio State. They were one and nine against Jim Tressel. Seven straight losses for Michigan. And the senior class trying to avoid losing four times to Michigan State and four times to Ohio State. Games at noon. Uh, against the Buckeyes next Saturday. Here's Robinson on third and 13. His pass incomplete. Green on the coverage. It's fourth down. Uh, again, and I know you get confidence throwing the football, but understand what you do best. He has a shot. There's nothing but green space for the first down for Denard Robinson if he chose to run the football. That's if when he gets to that point, that's when he re-becomes the most dangerous throw. offensive player in America. I'm just surprised you dismissed the whole Brady Hope comment about calling Well, he's got also got a sign that the last time they beat Ohio <laughs> or Ohio State has <laughs> been over 2,000 days. Almost 3,000. 42-yard <laughs> attempt, and that's no good. Missed it wide to the right, so technically Nebraska's still alive, down three scores, but 836 remaining. As that special team's blunder doesn't cost them any points. Still down 21, though. USC. Meanwhile, Nebraska running just its 37th offensive play. They've had the ball for less than 14 minutes. And Martinez now trying to play from behind.
line by having to throw the ball hits Marlowe for about seven yards. Nebraska wraps up the season Friday on ABC at noon against Iowa. But if they lose today with Michigan State winning, they will be eliminated. So with Michigan, so it'll be the Spartans against either Wisconsin or Penn State. Penn State playing Ohio State this afternoon. Then the Badgers next week as Martinez is sacked back at the 31-yard line. Jake Ryan there for Michigan. Rare mistake by Burkhead right there. Had a chance to pick up Desmond Morgan, who forced Martinez to tuck the ball with Ryan to clean up. Usually Burkhead will pick up that block. This is a defense coordinator's dream and a defense alignment's dream. You're playing a team that's not the depth throwing the ball and they're forced to, and they know it. Martinez fumbled the ball, and Michigan hopped on it. Wolverine football, another turnover. Jake Ryan chopped it out. And out of there with it is Van Bergen for the Wolverines. Show and blitz only bringing four, though. And a good job by Ryan of not going for the kill shot, but wrapping up and coming with an arm to swat it out. Watch his right arm there. Understands what the situation is and yanks it to football. And again, errors, errors, errors. The story of Nebraska today. Third turnover, two on special teams. Ball on the 31 of Nebraska. There's Toussaint. And he keeps going inside the 20. Toussaint, touchdown. Second touchdown of the day for Michigan's Fitz Tucson. He now has nine rushing touchdowns on the season, 10 overall, and Michigan rolling over Nebraska. 45 to 17, Michigan. Levante David said a great game closing in on 20 tackles not on this play you're going to get the option zone read that Urban talks about all day look at Denard Robinson sees the defensive end sitting outside Levante David running backside Amame has had a great game Amame blocking and Toussaint knows how to finish he had speed and burst and he doesn't go down on the first hit it's just sustaining the blocks Urban Toussaint is one of the most improved players. You, from the beginning of the year to right now, you made a comment this morning, he's the most improved play, offensive player on Michigan's offense. To come through this, well blocked by the offense line, to get him to the second level, then it's all up to the tailback for Toussaint to finish the deal, and he did. Great balance, great vision, and at the end of the play, accelerated right through the end zone. I just want to make a point. I mean, Levante Davis played outstanding. Right then, he avoided the contact, ran backwards, allowed Toussaint space to work and move can't do that. You got to take on those big guys once in a while. Bounce it back to your defenders. Time to press with Tucson. Now. You made that comment earlier. Abdullah will take it out for Nebraska. And Abdullah's across the 25, dragged down at the 30-yard line. Let's go to Reese in the studio. Dave, hey, Sports Center right now brought to you by Discover Card. Michael Vick will not play for the Eagles against the Giants Sundays. Had broken ribs. Of course, Vince Young. Former Northwestern star Mike Kafka are the backups. Mark Herzlick expected to get his first start in that game for the Giants, by the way, guys. Yep. I was actually there. Saw Vic get hurt last week. Boy, talk about guys not looking the same. Like a completely different quarterback from last year, Michael Vick. First down of the 30. And Martinez throws complete to Bell. He's short of the first down. Troy Wolf up there. If you're, if you're a Michigan fan, did you see this coming this year? After the last three years, yeah, you knew they were good on offense, but, but the defense and how things have changed. Well, that's why you bring in a Greg Madison as the flag is thrown on the field. I mean, a substitution Illegal penalty. substitution. The offense had 12 players in the formation. Number 10, that's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. I wonder what that call is. 
We had a chance to talk with Urban Meyer about Greg Madison. Greg's a great defensive coordinator. He's a recruiter. We talked to Greg yesterday, and Greg said this, that he enjoyed coaching in the NFL, but it was all about scheming and game planning. And one of the reasons why he came back to college was the fact that he wanted to get back into coaching. That means teaching techniques and kids how to play football. Martinez in trouble here as he throws, and it's incomplete. And the other thing, Madison's got a daughter that lives in the area. His son who plays for the Ravens comes back to uh, South Bend in the offseason. Urban, you've known Greg Madison for a long time and worked with him at, at Florida. What's your, what's your take on, on the job he's done here? Well, just a quality guy. When you make the comment about teaching, it's a much different uh, animal when you're going to go walk in a meeting room with Ray Lewis. How much teaching is going on? It's all about scheme and what zone pressure to call. Greg likes to impact young guys, young guys that help him through life, and uh, he's a great man, he's a great coach. And he's got him playing Michigan defense again as the ball floats out of the arm of Martinez. Kovacs coming on a blitz, hit the quarterback, it's fourth down. What they're doing is showing blitz, but they're still only rushing four, and Taylor Martinez has not seen it all day. Everybody else is going to drop out. They're only going to rush four. But it looks like they're bringing six. Take a look. Now Kovacs is going to come and watch everybody else drop out. You only have a four-man pressure, and here comes Kovacs, unblocked to make the play. And that's when you saw Madison give that little signal when he was winding his hand by his head. That's an international signal for show, but don't run it. Here's Gallon for Michigan on the punt return. And gobbled up at the 34-yard line. Well, we talked about Brian Madison, or Greg Madison trying to bring back Michigan defense, they're playing Michigan defense. Physical are the Wolverines today. A bit warmer in Maui than it is here. And actually not bad for mid-November. It's about 50 degrees as Devin Gardner is coming in for the first time at quarterback. In previous games, we'd see him in there with either Robinson out at wide receiver or out of the game. And Gardner played most of the second half last week against Illinois when Robinson was injured. Picks up about three, pushed out by Cassidy. There's a flag down in the backfield. Holding number 77, offense. Ten-yard penalty, repeat, first down. No, you're talking about Greg Madison and the difference between coaching an NFL player veteran and a young college player. And Chris Spielman made this observation earlier. The way Denard plays, he, does, he hasn't been running angry. He hasn't been running with passion or playing with passion. I've been kind of watching him on the sideline, watching his visual expressions, his facial expressions. He's playing with that passion. And for a young college player, that's a huge part of the game. Play with passion and love the game. Michael Shaw into the game and running back for Tucson. Shaw trying to get outside. Stafford's got him though for a loss on the play at the 22. When's the last time you saw Denard Robinson play as well as he as he did today? Last year against this type of competition. I mean, this is a pretty darn good defense coming in. And when you become a dual threat, that just puts a, a bunch of headaches on the plate of Luke Fickle and the Ohio State defensive coaching staff because all of a sudden, He's added, at least today in the first half, he added the scrambling game to his run game, which is really a pain to defend against. Shaw again, and this time he gets positive yardage, but not much, just keeps the clock moving, though. Now, what does that mean, big picture for Michigan? You play an excellent defense, your special team is on point. Also, now you have your key player playing with the passion enthusiasm that enthusiasm that everybody thought he would play with this year practice next week is going to be electric for Michigan going to the rivalry game it's been a while since they've beaten them I pointed that out earlier you didn't have to bring it up how many days is that <laughs> it's close to 3,000 somebody told me well Brady and I had fun with that um, this week he embraces the rivalry that's what I love about him embraces it there's Gardner on third and 20. And his pass is incomplete. Now the rivalry was perhaps at its 
Uh, at least in the last uh, 20 years, some of the better matchups were when Lloyd Carr was a head coach at, at Michigan, and uh, he's going to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Led him to a national title in 97. They actually tied uh, Nebraska. They split the national title that year, year before the BCS, and Lloyd was up here at halftime. Very happy with what he's doing now, but did a terrific job here in Michigan. Lloyd Carr is college football. He's Michigan football. And as a coach, former coach, you appreciate guys that do it the right way, do it with class. He's a great competitor, but he's always been first class. And he's a good friend and very, very proud to know Lloyd Carr and very member, uh, very proud to have him part of the coaching profession. And a darn good defensive coach in his day. I mean, people oh, remember yeah. Lloyd as a, you know, as a head coach, and rightfully so, but as a defensive coach, he was outstanding. And Brady Hope was an assistant on that staff in 97, in fact. Hoke was at Michigan as an assistant from 95 to 2002. Went to a Ball State in San Diego State as head coach. Now back at Michigan, and he's going to, as Martinez is sacked by Will Campbell, he's going to get Michigan its ninth win with an opportunity for 10 next week. And this place will be rocking when the Buckeyes come here with still an at-large BCS, a possibility for the Wolverines. Just the energy this year and the optimism surrounding just walking around campus and going to the restaurants. There's a feeling that Michigan is back to where it should be. And Burkhead across the 45 to the 46 where Will Campbell is. You know, you made the comment, did you see this coming? I had the opportunity to come watch Michigan practice in the spring in the indoor facility. I walked around. It was nothing like I expected. You know, you watched them on film on defense last year, and they were out. It, it just looked, it didn't look very good. And I watched them run around a practice field in the spring, and you saw some good players out there. You saw some guys running around and wanting to get better. Martinez, and he's got the first down, and then he gets drilled by Will Campbell. At the 38-yard line. But there's a coaching point, and what, in referencing what Urban just talked about, is what they're believing in is what Greg Madison builds his defense on, which is pursuit. And that time, Will Campbell not giving up on a play, chasing the ball downfield, and as Martinez gets knocked back, he gets a chance for a knockout shot. Ball at the 38-yard line. And Martinez steps up, throws complete to Inunua to the uh, 26 for a first down. Let me ask you this as a former coach and a former player, how much does belief play in? Because it's not like the talent level for Michigan on defense got enormously better from last year. In college football, everything. In pro football, I don't know, because you're, you know, you're working for paychecks and everything else. You're putting your belief in a system and in a coach. Once you get that, that's half the problem. That's half the issue right there. Now you got to get talent, make sure you have the right scheme. But once they believe in you, they'll do anything for you. Jay well, Long, the intended receiver, pass behind him incomplete. How gorgeous the offensive coordinator made this comment. If you are convinced that the coach is convinced in you, then you become convinced in yourself and you have that confidence. And as a college player, knowing that your coach believes in you and you're not looking over your shoulder, that helps you play better and with more confidence. And you're seeing that as a unit on the Michigan defense. Good open field tackle by Hawthorne on a Nunwa, so it'll bring up third down. Uh, Michigan led 17 to 10, but turnovers by Nebraska. And Denard Robinson blew open this game. 28 second half points for Michigan. And Taylor Martinez has not had a great day, but not a lot of plays. And they just didn't have the ball enough. Now part of that is because they couldn't convert third downs. Here's third and eight for Martinez, and it's caught by Reed for a first down at the nine. That'll be first and goal. You know, we talk about Denard Robinson and what he's brought, but the difference maker in this offense in the, the wild card is Toussaint, who's really upped his game as the year's gone on. And that's that whole thing about a coach being convinced in him, he's convinced in himself. Martinez will flow it into the end zone, and it's incomplete intended for Reed. Van Slyke was defending. So it is second down and goal. You know, I want to. I just want to build on the point you made, Dave, earlier about the essence of college football and getting a team to believe. 
every player wants to be great and every player wants ownership. If they believe your coaching staff can make you great and you give them ownership in the team, that's usually a magical thing happen. Magical things happen. The best teams we had is when our teams believed in our coaching staff, they had ownership in that team. Martinez throws incomplete, trying for Bell. Well, there's a former player of yours that a lot of people seem to believe in, Tim Tebow. As uh, he's four and one as a starter, your, your former quarterbacks are doing pretty well. Twelve and two as starting quarterbacks, Alex Smith and uh, Tim Tebow. They share a common theme, and that's they're both high-end competitors, high-end people, and that's uh, I'm proud of coach and proud of Noel, and even prouder right now of the way they're performing because they, they deserve that. They deserve. There's some players that you know sometimes you scratch your head. Other guys just because they outwork people. Here's Martinez incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, the other interesting side note, remember Jim Harbaugh, he was the target here to come to Michigan. And he elected to go to the NFL. Some people thought, oh, with the, with the lockout, there's no way. With Alex Smith in the lockout, no way San Francisco's a competitor. But they've lost one game, and that was in overtime to the Cowboys. And they, they got a shot. They got to get by the Packers, but they got a shot to do some big things. You know, Jim Harbaugh played against a guy standing right, to our, right in the middle of us in 1986. Here's fourth down, and... And the pass is incomplete, no flag, so Michigan will take over on downs. Let's get to the standings. You had enough NFL talk, Gus <laughs> huh, All right. No, Michigan State beat Indiana, so they are in. They are in the Big Ten title game December 3rd in Indianapolis. Michigan will improve to 5-2, and two, but uh, they lose the tiebreaker to Michigan State, so they're eliminated. Nebraska's eliminated. Meanwhile, Wisconsin won, so it's 5-2, and two, and it hosts Penn State next week. The Nittany Lions play Ohio State today. So that is a obviously huge game next week. And if Michigan State were to lose the Big Ten Championship game, or even if they win, it's possible that Michigan, if it can beat Ohio State next week, could have a shot at a BCS at large. You think seemingly every year the Big Ten gets two teams in to the uh, BCS along with the champion and at large team. So you would think, even though uh, the current, you got to be in the top 14 of the BCS standings and have nine wins to be eligible, you would think, even though Michigan right now is 18, that it will move up. Just three points separate Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart. Heading into the final race for the championship. Now they'll go head-to-head -head for NASCAR's ultimate prize. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes with a Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami. Coverage begins on ESPN Sunday at 2 Eastern. Big game coming up on ABC at 3.30. Penn State heading into Columbus. The first road game, obviously, for, for Penn State since the developments of two weeks ago. We were there last week, and you wonder if maybe as a team they're looking forward to being away from right. State College. Yeah, I think you know they should be proud of how they performed last week. Even though they lost, they performed admirably. Gardner takes a knee. We'll see if Nebraska uses timeouts here or just lets Michigan close out the game. Wolverines will take on the Buckeyes here at noon next Saturday. Last year, they lost 37-7 in Columbus. Their last win against Ohio State was in 2003. Seven straight losses to the Buckeyes. But obviously, this is a different Michigan team, and Ohio State is obviously different with four losses and three and three in the Big Ten. Gardner will have to take a knee one more time, and Michigan is going to win its ninth game. Nebraska will fall to eight and three, but still a shot at nine wins next week against Iowa, and then perhaps a tenth win in a bowl game. Don't don't devalue the opportunity for Nebraska to finish strong now, because it's going to carry over to recruiting, off season. Bo Pelini is a heck of a coach. He's had great success there. He has to get these guys back. Get this one. I don't know if he even show this tape. Bring him back on Sunday. Get to work and get ready for Iowa. Find a way to get that win. It's a short week, too. That game Friday at noon Eastern on ABC. This day belongs to the Wolverines. Michigan beats Nebraska 45-17. Brady Host squad is 9-2, 5-2 in the Big Ten. College 
college football is coming up next here on ESPN. For Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman, Quinn Kesnick, our entire outstanding crew. I'm Dave Pash. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long from Ann Arbor. Now we go to Reese Davis in our ESPN studio.